everybody, and <laughs> welcome to a live spoiler review episode of the WandaVision finale, brought to you by the Geek Buddies. <gasps> hey! <laughs> Nice, nice shirt. That shirt is great, too. <laughs> We're going to get into so many things tonight. The WandaVision finale. What a banger. 15 Ooh. minutes long. We got a post credit scene, a mid credit scene, and we got all kinds of madness in between. Dare I say, no, I won't say multiverse, but there was certainly madness and a lot going on that we're going to break all of it down in our own inimitable way, going scene by scene. We're going to answer some of your super chats, some of your stream labs. The stream labs address is in the description. It's right above my head and it's also pinned in the chat. So if you want to send your comments, start sending them in now. We'll find breaks throughout the review to answer them or bring them up and talk about them or put a pin on them as we address them if they pertain to a scene later on in the show. We're going to do all of it. But first of all, thank you all so much for joining us live. Let's introduce ourselves. I am the outlaw, John Roker, writer, producer, and host here on the Outlaw Nation, one third of the Geek Buddies. And over to my left, uh, hey, it is Michael Vogel, writer and producer of animated TV shows and movies. And this is Shannon McClung. I'm an animation writer and a television actor where you may have seen me on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and Modern Family. Uh, and our special guest who has been here every week with us through the whole journey of WandaVision. And we couldn't be more blessed and thankful uh, to have the great and powerful <laughs> Emma Fife joining us. Emma, how are you? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I am sad that this show is over, mm. but what an ending. So <laughs> yeah. I can't. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we'll really get into it, but I had a friend who texted me who's been like going through some shit and oh. she uh, has been loving WandaVision. And so because she's been having all this anxiety, she texted me and was like, okay, the thing I'm stressing about right now is I'm afraid WandaVision's not gonna stick the ending. And I was like, I hear you, <laughs> but based on how the show has gone so far, I don't think that's gonna be the case. Yeah. Uh, and personally, I, I loved it. So Yeah, and we're going to yeah. get into it. That's for sure. We're going to talk about it all. And so just right off the bat, we've got 300 of you watching us live already. That's Woo! incredible. <laughs> please hit that like button. For those of you watching later, leave a comment. But for now, please remember uh, to be respectful in the chat as we go through everything. There might be some differences of opinions here and in the chat. Just yeah. keep them respectful, just like we're going to keep it respectful uh, throughout this whole breakdown of this series finale season finale so possibly series finale all kinds of rumors out there now that there might be a second season down the road who can say but emma let's swing all back to you let's start off with this uh and we'll say this right now this is a spoiler review this is a second warning here before we really dive into it uh so if you haven't seen the finale we're going to spoil the hell out of this thing so just warning you now but emma what's your overall reaction now uh, after having watched the WandaVision finale, and really, uh, we'll talk about the entire season later, but sure. really how it all connects up. How do you feel about it now? So this is my feeling about it. The show is called WandaVision. And for all the other things in the show that were really great as far as extending the fabric of this universe and setting us up for possibilities of other things happening in the future of the Marvel Cinematic Verse as a whole, because uh, it's not just like the, I guess I should have said, like the Marvel Cine Television Matic <laughs> Universe. You know no, what I mean? No. Like we're getting into we're getting into film and television now. Um, for all of the the sort of great marvelness of it all, what was so great about this series was the relationship between Wanda and Vision. Mm. And ultimately, you had to believe in that story and in the sadness that Wanda had experienced and the losses that she had suffered to really make the series work. And as far as the emotional payoff of the show, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. All right, Mike Vogel, I'll go to you next. Like, this has been a hell of a journey. We've gone through so many things with Wanda, and we had some beautiful moments in this uh, finale as well. Some touching moments, some strong moments, some battles. What's your feeling now uh, walking out of this finale for WandaVision? Uh, 
I'm just kind of in love with Marvel at the moment. I'm, I'm kind of with Emma. I'm kind of with Emma insofar as like, look, I do think, and I think we will get into it, I think there are a couple things about the finale that are not perfect. Sure, uh, I, agree. I think that there's some things coming out at the end that you're like, well, okay, they didn't quite stick this. I think they might have made some mistakes here. I don't know if this is perfect, but at the end of the day, and I think we said this in our review last week, this show hinges on Wanda and Vision, just like Emma said. And mm-hmm. I think that in that respect, they nailed it. And I think yeah. that... Uh, as as everybody and their tinfoil hat theories and each week kind of surmising and combing Marvel as 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 we have all done Shannon better than most of us but as all of us as all of us have gone around with all of our theories and to get to the ending and kind of see all a lot of those theories just like poof into smoke like like a stork uh, in Wanda's house uh, it. It was okay. It was okay. I, I was happy that we didn't have a Luke Skywalker level cameo. I was happy right. that we didn't have all of these things happen because it would have taken away. Like there was literally a moment where near the end where I was like, ooh, if Doctor Strange is going to show up, this is when he's going to show up. And my second thought right after that was, which would mean that he's rescuing Wanda, which kind of would be weird. And so I was actually super satisfied. There's a couple things I wasn't, but overall, I I was so thrilled to get the third act of a Marvel movie in my living room on a Friday morning. There you go. Uh, Shannon McClung, I go to you next. Overall feelings about the finale. You've had some reservations over the last couple of episodes of how they're doing certain things. Did this finale nail it for you overall? Or like Michael, do you have some things that you had some issues with but that didn't overwhelm your feelings about the finale? Overall, immensely satisfied. I mean, I I absolutely think they stuck the landing. They didn't land on the runway that I thought they were going to land on, but they still, the aircraft made it down safely. It (laughs) definitely didn't land on Hayward Island. We know that for sure. (laughs) Now, the 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 thing when you're when you're putting something together like this is Hindsight is 2020. I mean, you, you you can look at the final product as a creator and be like, oh boy, I should have done this, I should have done this, I should have done this. But you can't, you know, that's that's not the way, that's not how you put together a, a script or a show or a film. Like, that's just not the way it works. And again, I, we talked, I think we talked uh, on our last Geek Buddies episode about how they had an idea probably what stuff was going to take off and what wasn't, but nobody bats a thousand there. You had... They probably had no idea the whole aerospace engineer is like, oh, my gosh, they right. think this is somebody. <laughs> Paul Bettany had no idea the the, the, the the firestorm he was going to set off by saying what he said. He, he, had, he did an interview with Good Morning America that was hilarious where yes, George I Stephanopoulos saw it. <laughs> and Michael Strahan both kind of called him out. And you can see. The genuine awkwardness of, yeah, you know when you say something and you think it's going to be funny? My (laughs) guess is that he got more than one phone call from Marvel saying, Paul, please don't do that again. What are you doing? What are you doing? (laughs) Don't go off script, Paul. Don't go off script. (laughs) This was not on the talking points that we gave you, Paul. (laughs) Um, But overall, immensely satisfied. Were there things that kind of stuck out to me? Um, yeah, absolutely. With almost anything, there's going to be things that stick out. One or two that we'll talk about later mm. and that I imagine we'll get into quite deep. But overall, for for the uh, the arrival of MCU's Phase 4, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, I have to echo the feelings that uh, everybody here on the panel has. Thoroughly enjoyed the finale. I watched it three times today just to kind of really make sure how I felt about the show and how I felt about the episode. I did have like two or three reservations, which we will get into as we go along. But overall, they nailed Wanda and Vision. And as I said last week, that's the foundation. That's what I needed them to get right. All the other stuff we can argue about, nitpick and what have you. And we will, ladies and gentlemen, we will. But what I wanted them to get (laughs) right, (laughs) and you know we will, what I wanted them to get right was this love story and this story of grief and and that love perseveres. And they got that right. And it was a gorgeous, gorgeous final scene between Westview Vision and Wanda. And you couldn't ask for anything more from that when you compare it to the other scenes. And I watched the Legends episode afterwards on Wanda detailing her relationship with the MCU and with Vision, and it just added even more weight to Mm -hmm. what I had just seen. So 
overall very satisfied we'll pick some stuff out to discuss for sure but overall can't have uh, can't don't have too many complaints and this has been a hell of a season and we'll talk about that a little bit later uh all right before we get going we're we, oh my god we got 550 you all watching us live thank you so much make sure you hit that like button as we go along Amazing. through this thing Real quick, Derek Johnson says, you geek buddies just keep doing these reviews. We all are loving them. <laughs> By the way, every pothole will eventually be resolved for those complaining. Well, thank you, Derek. Well, it's very kind of as I, I, as I am driving, as I am driving on the freeway of geekdom, I am glad we are filling the potholes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even necessarily consider them to be what I assume he meant plot holes, um, right. but maybe potholes, maybe potholes on yeah. the, on the super highway of fiction <laughs> and geekdom. Um, but uh, to me, they feel like plot threads. Like that was the mm. thing that I thought was really satisfying about this was we have a lot of un like woven threads, but it didn't feel to me like we didn't conclude the story we were telling. Yeah, clearly. I, I do think credit scene we didn't. Yeah, I do think there's a couple things that didn't quite get answered, and we'll get into them mm. later. And yeah, I think yeah. that, and I think, but again, they're so small. Like it, it get you get into like polar bear in lost territory it's like <laughs> does, does that like there's some things from the beginning that we all thought meant one thing that didn't mean something and they never really got answered and we can all argue till the day's end on whether that needed to be answered or whether it was just a cool thing or whatever and everyone will have different opinions on that but i think again all in all nothing is ever going to be perfect uh yeah. ex except for like three movies in history um mm -hmm. and and the fact that most of it got answered and the fact that the important stuff, the emotional yeah. stuff, yeah. really landed uh, is what really makes the most difference to me. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, and we'll see. And remember, this is their first MCU sanctioned and approved show. So it's like a guinea pig going out there, and I think they nailed it. And whatever lessons they've learned, they'll take it into the subsequent shows that haven't been filmed yet and learn from that. And I think that's a positive overall. Like I just rewatched Iron Man for that thing my girlfriend and I are doing on stereo, and it was so funny to watch Iron Man versus Iron like Iron Man now would be incredible. Iron Man then was great for what it was at that time. Right. So it's all about the timing of when things start and who's the first one out the gate. People learn the lessons from that. But twice now, Marvel has kicked it off out the gate really, really well in a new medium. So, all right, let's jump into the episode here. We begin, you know, previously on WandaVision starts out, she's a bit more peppy again, maybe because it's finally the end of these nine episodes. But we begin with Wanda and Agatha out on the street, right where we left off at the end of the last episode. Agatha's holding her kids by that those purple magic tripwires. The witch battle begins. It's just almost immediately right in to the fighting. Wanda tells the kids to run into the house. They refuse for just a second. And then Agatha pulls off an undertaker and comes back from the dead like that. And it's like so scary. And then boom, off go the kids into the house. Uh, and uh, Agatha lays down the groundwork of what she wants. She says, I take power from the undeserving. It's kind of my thing. Agatha clearly wants Wanda's magic. Then Wanda sends Agatha or sends the car into Agatha, which goes into the house. And we get a Wizard of Oz moment with her boots <laughs> under the car, which was so great. And then out of nowhere, White Vision, who I'll call Vision for the rest of this review, they share a moment here for just a second. He says, Wanda, she's sensing that this is the actual body of Vision and says, Vision, is that you? And then out of nowhere with some uh, just some really hardcore moment, he starts to crush her head and we hear the cracks on her skull. He lifts her up, is about to maybe choke her out or smash her head into pieces. And then Westview Vision shows up, knocks down a vision into an RV, exploding it. Wanda Vision flies in. Uh, yeah, Wanda runs up and says to Vision that she should have told him everything. Says the kids are in the house. She says she can fix it. He asks, can you? Then Agatha and Vision pop back out. Vision says, this is our home. Then let's fight for it. Vision and Wanda, and it's on like Donkey Kong. Michael, all right, we'll stop there. What a beginning scene right off the bat into the action. No conversation, no like ruminating. No, this is just boom. Let's get into some MCU action. What was your reaction to this opening scene here? Well, my first reaction is you really should have been a sports announcer for wrestling <laughs> <laughs> as as a career. So that was that was that was some that was some fine work. 
Uh, okay, a couple of, you hit all the big moments. I think uh, you're right. They, we dive right into the action. Sort of confirm, I know that like there was some discussion about this last week when we saw Agatha's uh, flashback about what was really happening. Was she defending herself? Was she, do, was she fooling? And we're pretty confirmed now, like this is her thing. She was Agatha-ing them. She yeah. got them to put her up on the uh, up on the stake, and then she absorbed their powers. Like that, mm-hmm. that's what she did then. That's what she does now. She says, "This is my thing." She is very powerful because she has been going through her life from the 1600s to today, uh, absorbing magic, like like getting people to attack her so she can absorb their magic. That's her jam. So mm-hmm. that's pretty much confirmed. Got that figured out. Uh, loved, loved Wanda hitting her. Like when once Wanda realizes that she can't use the witch powers against her, she goes yeah. back to her Avengers training and says, "I'm gonna do a little distraction. And I'm gonna pull my Civil War Tony Stark move and just slam you with a car." Uh, it's it that is that is Wanda's move. Like if you were in the fighting game, the special move is hit you with a Buick, and I'm down for it. <laughs> um, it's good. It's good. Uh, Love the Wizard of Oz reference. Uh, you know, something I didn't really think about uh, until there's a couple other Wizard of Oz nods later in the yeah. uh, in the episode as well. And and really the fact that WandaVision is Wizard of Oz. It mm. is a show that starts in black and white and goes to color and there's witches and a lot of people are uh, appearing as one character but really acting as a different character. And there's really a lot of a lot of Wizard of Oz in uh, in 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 uh, the show that I didn't really think about. Um, yeah. White Vision, Vision. I'm sorry. We will we will go by the uh, <laughs> outlaw, like the call. outlaw, <laughs> the outlaw sanction term. Uh, yeah, Vision so showing up. <laughs> it was so brutal. This episode, this ser- this episode on the whole, I will say, just kept giving me emotionally brutal moments. And yeah. Wanda seeing this Vision that she didn't know, she wasn't sure who it was, but just this is her man. This is who she loves. This is why she's done everything. Mm-hmm. And to have that face kind of like crush her head like it's a it's a brutal moment uh thankfully our vision comes in saves the day and then i just really loved uh you know right right off the bat i should have told you everything when i realized a lot of debate online about when exactly wanda realized i have my theories on it we can get into that later but i love her saying i can fix this and him just being like can you like after even after all they've been through it's still like I love you and I'm with you, but are we sure? And then the two of them just fighting uh, together and going for it and just flying off as a team. It's like, it's been so great. It's a lovely arc. Like they were so together at the beginning Mm -hmm. and then Vision started getting suspicious. They kind of went their separate ways. Wanda was over here. Vision was all the way over here. They both got the information they needed and to just have them come back together at the very beginning of this finale. All we really needed was that moment of like, I should have told you, I'm with you. We're together on this. Let's fight for our home. And then we're off to the races. Like, it was beautifully done and really just set up the stakes of the episode. Like, we didn't have to wait for White Vision to come in. We didn't do it like, Agatha's bad. White Vision is here. We've got the situation. Let's go, go, go. Yeah, Emma, did you like the way this thing started out? Right off the bat, picking up right where we left off, into the battles, into the fights, and of course, White Vision showing up. By the way, great design. Great designs all around, I think, throughout the all whole episode. Around. But incredible design. Yeah, but what was your feeling as this is the way they decided to start this episode? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is the thing, is that I think what's been so brilliant about WandaVision is that it has been subver- subverting a lot of what we would more traditionally expect out mm, of yeah. like an MCU associated property where it is a lot of like big powerful people flying through the sky blasting each other with similar powers yeah. um and because they used it sparingly i find it to be very effective here and like there's not a lot of exposition they jump right into it i wanted to point out um mm-hmm. to uh vogel's point about the idea of like the wizard of oz thing and mm-hmm. so i i noticed yesterday a thread um my friend riley silverman was like making some observations about mm-hmm. like the the hero's journey often when it is about a woman is is about the idea of like having to kind of like go through your dreams your subconsciousness if you look at something like a wizard of oz or an alice in wonderland and so in a lot of ways like wandavision really oh, does echo point. that because so oh, that's much awesome. of it yeah cuz like so much of it is about like her confronting her own perceptions of reality and dealing with things that have happened to her in her past. And again, like right. she's created this false reality in the way that like an Oz or a Wonderland is a false mm-hmm. reality. But it's just, and in a lot of ways, it's like, because in the case of Dorothy or an Alice, they were both supposedly dreaming. Mm-hmm. In a lot of ways, that is what's happening with Wanda. It's just that she is living 
that dream and other people are involved in it because she is like in their subconscious. And I mean, we can get even into that even more once we address her confronting the people who yeah. she's been controlling. Yeah, true. But, um, but yeah. And oh God, when, when vision came back and she had that moment of like recognizing that from a physical and like physiological yeah. standpoint that that was vision but it didn't yeah. have any of like what makes vision vision right not quite yet not yeah, yet great point great point and it agatha hits her with the your ex and your uh your new man coming like, yeah and your boyfriend and your boyfriend going at each other uh, uh, you know uh shannon we get the white vision a lot of people thought we were getting the gray vision that's certainly certainly something i said a few episodes ago thinking it was going to be that gray vision but we've got a white vision still might lead us to a west coast avengers situation but what was your reaction when they i mean there wasn't any kind of like conversation with hayward and vision go get him big guy there was nothing white vision just showed up and we were at it man yeah, you got to hit the ground running. And yeah. and sometimes when you have to hit the ground running at this speed, you don't have time to do everything that you would maybe like to do. Like, how did Vision get into the hex? Yeah. We we didn't see that. And we're just going to accept it that that Wanda's magic rec recognize like, oh, this, this is Vision, let him in. He's safe, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, I, I will say, the, <laughs> the moment that Agatha said, I have this in my notes, the moment that Agatha said, you know, I, I take other people's power, other witches' power, mm. it's kind of my thing. I literally wrote, yep, Emma was right, womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about um, Vision's arrival is the first thing that we saw in episode eight when Wanda reconstructed Vision, the first thing he said with just the most incredible warmth was Wanda. Yeah. And when Vision got there, mm. that's also the first thing he said, but there, right. was a, there was a very robotic filter. And as an audience yeah. member, we knew what was about to happen. Right. She did not know it was about to happen. So those moments were just dynamite. And yes, I mean, I do love that uh, uh, Wanda's weapon of choice, if she can't, if she can't hit you with her hex magic, she's gonna throw a car at you. Yeah, a Kia yeah. to be specific. So <laughs> we know we know they paid to be. Kia was a sponsor. <laughs> That's right. We know that. Uh, all right, uh, and as this is raging outside, the camera pulls back, and we see Monica banging on the window as Wanda flies away, and she's in someone's <gasps> house. I don't know whose house. It's Pietro's house. A perfect musician grunge look from the '90s in there. She tries to leave. He uses his super speed, knocks her back with a pink. Uh, then we get to Vision, fighting White Vision or Vision. Great fighting stuff. He tries to take the Mind Stone. They go inside each other. They hurtle to the ground. And then we go to Hayward's office and Jimmy Woo comes in. And Hayward immediately ball busts him. But somehow a cell phone is vibrating that no one else notices but Jimmy Woo. And Jimmy finds a way to sneak that thing into his back pocket. <laughs> and none of the military guys somehow see him do it. Or Hayward. Okay. Hay None okay. of the military guys also noticed that Hayward has been lying to them yeah, well, the whole well, time. He signs the paychecks, <laughs> I feel like. But maybe you're right, Emma. That's a good point. But Hayward, Hayward <laughs> makes a terrible vision joke to be way on the nose. Jimmy Woo oh. friends him with the FBI. Uh, he says, you're faking it. Then Jimmy Woo is thrown into a hayloft and uh, somehow is not guarded. Pulls out a safety pin, which I think is a callback to Ant-Man and Wasp. And then uh, uh, unhooks the cuffs and then calls Cliff over at the FBI. Mm -hmm. All right, let's stop there. Uh, 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 Emma, I go to you yes. first here. All this happening, Pietro, Monica, mm -hmm. Jimmy Wu, Hayward, so much happening while Vision and White Vision battle in the skies. Talk to me about these interactions here okay. in this part of the show. So at this point, because of Pietro, like independently using these powers, mm and not being sure what the association he had to Agatha was when he discovered Monica outside of the house. Like right. I didn't, you, you know, we were left with the snoopers going to snoop scene and that was the last we'd seen of them. And we didn't know exactly what was going on outside of that. So like in my mind, I was, I still thought this could be somebody who had turned out to not be because I was like, he's still got powers. He's using them independently. He's not being controlled by Agatha anymore, which turned out to be wrong. But you yeah. know, I had a moment. Um, but uh, but yeah, okay. So Jimmy Woo is just a, such a great character, uh, and I. The thing is, is if it were anyone but Jimmy Woo, because Jimmy Woo was presented so early on within Ant Man as being like a comic yeah. relief sort of character. He's just a guy who like True. is trying really hard to learn this close up magic card trick. 
He's he is not perceived as somebody who is like powerful and capable and cunning, even though he is an FBI agent. Right. So to me, it made a lot of sense that they would underestimate this character and be like, whatever, we caught him, no problem. We're just going to throw him in this hayloft. He'll be fine. <laughs> as uh, as the Space Windu says, Jimmy Woo's powers are he can blind anyone for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Good point. Perfect. Good yeah. point. And, and shout out misdirection. <laughs> yeah. And shout out to everybody in the chat who wants to call White Vision Flourish. Uh, flourish in it because he's flower based all right anyway uh shannon what was your thoughts about this scene here is we got a little more we find out what happened to monica there but we've got jimmy Woo, we've got hey we're doing this thing and trust me we'll get to hayward island everybody calm down in the chat. We'll <laughs> but trust me uh, but, uh, just trust sit right looking. back and you'll hear a tale <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I never got off that island either. Tell me, what do you think about this, Shannon? Uh, well, look, the the the, the fact that uh, Monica was in that house and <laughs> Pietro's there sitting there with his guitar um, uh, at this point, like immediately, that that irked me, and I'm like, ah, oh, come on, but you know, like, why why this this person just got powers? We've seen her be awesome, and it's like, oh, but her powers thus far have been reactive and defensive. Ah, yeah. So that's that was kind of was like, okay, that's how I sort of justified it uh, in, in my head. Um, but sword agents really are the worst. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> because these people are supposed to be protecting the globe, for God's sakes. But yeah, go ahead. Why? Well, one, I don't remember Jim, Jimmy getting apprehended in the last episode. Maybe uh, I'm forgetting uh, that. No, I don't think we saw it happen, yeah. if okay. I'm being honest. Yeah, so I'm I, assuming I think we that... just skipped that part and assumed that, because like Darcy got caught up in the hex. Right. Jimmy but, got out. So but, did the yeah. entire team that Jimmy was with get apprehended as well? I'm assuming if, if they got probably. one of them, they were probably going to get the rest of them. Yeah, they probably yeah. did. But yeah. the fact that he was able to move away from these, you know, big military dudes who who, who have taken him hostage, yeah. and he was able to move away, sit on a desk so he I could just... grab a phone, and at some point grab a safety pin or a paper yeah. clip as well, I was like, Okay, you know, that's it's fine. It's fine. This this is not my favorite part, but it is right. not it is not detracting from my enjoyment enough to to really to to make me eye roll. Yeah, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we all can hear a vibrating phone, okay? We can <laughs> all hear the vibrating phone. So if I just don't think that's something good sneak by, but you know, you allow certain allowances because as Emma said, this is how Jimmy Woo was introduced from the beginning. So this is the kind of Jimmy Woo antics we're going to see in scenes that involve him. So you have to either accept it or just, you know, or move on past it. I don't know. But Michael, chime in here on this scene, brother. All right. Well, I'm going to say something. So here's a thing from a writing standpoint that sucks. Third mm -hmm. acts suck. So you have this, <laughs> like, like, it's hard. Like, like it's like, yeah. like, I... Everything that we're talking about, which is a thousand percent valid, and I have the exact same issues, and I'll get into them in a minute, but just these guys, this whole team, put together this amazing show, and you put together all these pieces, and you're moving pieces yeah. on the board, and you're getting to this point, and like, they don't get to decide, I would like another 30 minutes. Like, the mm -hmm. production, special effects, budget, everything dictates, like, this is, you're telling this story in this amount of time. So mm -hmm. they get to this episode, and they've got a lot to do. Yeah. And so this is where, as a writer, you start to get a little stressed. <laughs> like, you don't, you don't have time to go, fuck, we should send Jimmy Woo to the bathroom and then Hayward's goons can grab. Like, there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that just don't get. And it doesn't, I'm not, and this isn't an excuse because it's the thing, these are the things that annoy all of us. But as I was watching this, and I think this is one, I wouldn't even say this was a flaw because I really enjoyed it so much. But this was where you really started seeing how much they were trying to accomplish in a very little amount of time. Yeah, and I think yeah. that this is one of the reasons, so like starting with the Monica Pietro stuff, like Monica, I think got a little bit of a short shrift in this finale. And like yes. that bugged me because I think, because we'll I think that, that she has later, been yeah, so sure. great so long. So like when yeah. we see her here and we sort of just touch base with where she is, but she just gets the finger poke and she flies back and you're like, okay, well we know where she is, but I guess she's not in the action yet. And then, yeah, like Pietro. So I will say, like Pietro in his little man cave made me laugh. I love mm -hmm. the whole man cave vibe for him. But this is where I started to get a little nervous. Of like, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna see where we're gonna go with uh, with yeah. Pietro here. Yeah. And so, kind of like that scene just sort of established where they were and didn't do much else. Uh, now I will say we didn't talk about it a lot. The vision vision fight in the sky was yeah. like, well, I'm glad that we have feature level special effects on a TV <laughs> <Yeah, right>. show <laughs> because. 
holy shit, this whole sort of uh, phasing battle that was happening yeah. was just really good. Like, just like choreographing something with two characters who have the exact same power in such a cool way. Like I'm phasing through your hand while I'm phasing out. Well, I'm phasing through here. I'm doing this. Even like Vision trying to do the Thanos move of I'm yeah, going to take your mind. I'm going to take yeah. your mind stone out or, or rip that part of your head out and Vision just like phasing through. That was great. Uh, we got to the Hayward scene and I was just like, Hey Hayward, why don't you just say all the shit that makes you a villain forever? <laughs> um, I mean, and literally. Like, and he was like, "Hold on, I got to shoot some kids in a little bit." But anyway, go, oh, yeah, go we'll ahead. get there. Uh, we'll get there. Yeah. I will. I will say when we get to that point, I was like, you know what? I'm kind of feeling for Johnny right now because I yeah, feel like I, it, it was. It was almost. It was almost like a hollow victory, even though I'll still take the victory. Sure, um, sure. But uh, but yeah, like I'm so Hayward he kind of loving baby seals in the process. Anyway, go hey, ahead. Yeah. So Hayward <laughs> does kind of unveil his ultimate villainy, and yes, all of the Jimmy stuff. I think everything you guys are saying is right. I think this does get chalked up to we've got a lot to do, so let's just get Jimmy out of his handcuffs. But I really did enjoy his flourish, and like it's <laughs> like I'm. I think I'm just in love with Jimmy Woo, and I will forgive him anything because I love him dearly mm-hmm. and want him to be want him to be in all the marvel movies from now on yeah mm-hmm. i mean look i i i knew immediately from that scene i was like oh yeah this they're gonna turn him into a bad guy and i'm not gonna get the well, backstory i'm well, not wait. gonna get the things like <laughs> wait, wait to be fair he was he had been turned into the bad guy you just were on the it island going blah, 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 blah. i was expect <laughs> i was expecting better from the writers and we didn't get it we didn't get that backstory we didn't get this show has been so nuanced with so many characters that they've introduced uh and it's it was just frustrating that one of their main antagonists was just a mustache twirling empty promises from the great space coaster type well, level a villain with nothing inside of it and that frustrated the hell out of me because I just don't want to see that kind of easy approach to a villain. Government bad, real people good. I just had issues with that overall. So I that was my problem. I think that's something that we've seen a lot in the MCU yeah, across the board. Yeah, I don't want to see it anymore. No, I agree. I, no, oh, yeah. I, I, I think that your feelings on that are completely valid. Yeah. And like, even as somebody that, you know, was, was Hayward, probably bad guy from early on, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I... I respect I, wanting a more nuanced. That's all. Evil. That's all I sure. want. Yeah, yeah. I actually, and I actually, this, I will agree with you. Like, I, I as much as I was like taking the win, and I will mm-hmm. take the win, and I will remind you about this win for the next mm-hmm. 20 years or so. But <laughs> um, I was also agreeing. I think that what they were doing with Hayward earlier on, when he was talking yeah. a lot about the Sokovia Accords, yeah. like he, like, I didn't agree with him, and I still painted him in the villain category, but I thought that he had a point of view that while skewed and ultimately incorrect had validity. And I do think that, like I said, given the amount that they were trying to accomplish in the amount of time that they had, I think he did kind of just go down the road of, okay, well, I have to go do the bad guy things now. But I think they did fall a little bit flat. And I think that there's a couple places where they could have added something in there that actually would have made it a little bit stronger and would have uh, maybe had you still arguing yeah. with us more on Hayward Island, but would have been a little bit more uh, satisfying for all of us. Yeah, because I mean, we yeah. see the, the, the best villains are the ones where you can kind of see their point of view. And certainly a lot of, a lot of people felt Thanos had a little bit of credit for doing, got, should have oh. gotten a little bit of credit for what he, what he did. Well, I, I thought that Thanos to me, like to present the concept of Thanos to me, yeah. I see mustache twirly villain, but the way that he was depicted in Infinity War, yeah. in particular, was brilliant. I I yeah. loved it. That was Thanos to me was like uh, I think I did a movie fights where I argued that Thanos won. Yeah, and I won I, that I fight. Yeah, he did, and you should have. Yeah, he absolutely yeah. won. Because and also when he obliterated half the galaxy, he didn't go by color, by social station, by money or anything. It was just boom, half yeah. the galaxy yeah. randomly gone. There is a fairness in that that, that you can respect. And that was right on the heels of Killmonger in um, in Black Panther, Panther, who was also a nuanced villain. I I agree, but but like the MCU definitely does have a little bit of a villain problem. It is not a military problem. There are plenty of like heroic military figures within the MCU. Yeah. uh, But 
there are often also like villainous military figures who don't get explained as well as the heroic ones. Right, right. Yeah, Thanos took no pleasure in what he had to do. He right. just mm -hmm. knew like, I'm the one who can do this and it needs to happen. Hayward right. is talking about, well, who cares? Who cares what the aftermath is? I'm the guy who got Wanda Maximoff. Right, right. He wanted that credit, that's for mm -hmm. sure. Anyway, all right, let's move on. Let's keep going on here. Uh, where are we going to next? Oh yeah, Wanda goes back into the town. We see Herb, messenger guy, makes a little crack, which is is funny norm uh, and then Wanda is just kind of trying to figure out where agatha is coming and of course agatha hits her from behind then shoots on up to the top of it building in front of a squeaky shine billboard which is really fun uh and then she does a little bit of exposition here and i'll be curious to hear what vogel thinks when we get to his thoughts on this she reveals there's a whole chapter devote in the dark hole devoted to the scarlet witch it's the book of the dam the scarlet witch is not born she is forged her power exceeds that of the sorcerer supreme if you're a comic book nerd immediately it is dr strange or if you're watching the movies immediately is tilda swinton who was the sorcerer supreme in dr strange her destiny is to destroy the world bit of a house of m reference then she gets all m and m on her and she's like i'm not what you say i am and then agatha <laughs> challenges her and then confronts her with the townspeople showing her what she did to them how they've been missing their family members it's harrowing to hear their pain and then we go back to Fietro and Monica. So let's stop here for just a second. So Shannon, I go to you first on this one. What is the squeaky clean billboard shine? But what did you think of this whole scene as essentially Agatha is handing information to Wanda that she will obviously use later on in the episode. But in the moment, why surrender this information? Why do all of this? We know Agatha is a guide to Wanda. Is she kind of low-key doing that here in this moment? I think I think more than anything, she's trying to overwhelm her. Like, listen, look, ah, this, this is where you are right now. Um, one, I love the fact that it was the Darkhold. Like, we, I know we speculated last week that it wasn't the Darkhold because it was yeah. used with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and it was used with Runaways. This is a very different looking Darkhold. I think I think this book, this book looks awesome. Right. But the fact that she's basically like, you have, there is all this stuff in you that you cannot control. Like, just give it to me. Give yeah. it to me. Let me take it off your hands. And, you know, you can have you can have this idyllic little town. I just want that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, the, the fact that Wanda pushes back so hard that I do not cast spells. I am not a witch. And yeah. that's when Agatha kind of shut everybody off. And it's just and like, you know, you made it. You, you're making them do this. Like, no, no, this is you, toots. I mean, it was yeah. awesome scene. Awesome, awesome scene. Yeah, really exposed, Michael, what I've been saying, right? That she's mind controlling these people against their will. That has to get called out. And Agatha uh, call, shows what Wanda's been doing. And Wanda tries to blame Agatha because she doesn't want to confront it. And we'll get to her extreme reaction in a little bit here. But, like, this is the first kind of crack in this veneer. And you're, I think Shannon's right. This is all an attempt to overwhelm her with information, put her guard down, and strike. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Look, Agatha's goal here is she wants Wanda to give her her power. Right. And whether she's going to goad her into attacking or make her feel so shitty that Wanda gives it over, she doesn't care. She just wants that level of power. Yep. And so here, she's laying it out. Like, it's good for, like, yeah, like, to everybody's point, I think it's really funny because it's very clear that Kevin Feige or the Marvel feature people were like, I don't care what the fuck the dark hold looked like in Runaways or Shield. We need to <laughs> yeah. make it look cooler. Like, we need to make it cool. <laughs> like That's I don't care. You I, continuity is important, but not right now. I don't like it. Get Pam from the art department to make a better dark hold, and that's what they did. Um, but yeah, so I thought, yeah, like, like, and it's really cool. Like, like she's not, she's not born. She's formed. There's no need for a yeah. coven. Her power, like you said, the power exceeds the Sorcerer Supreme and she's destined to destroy the world. And I think that what is great to Johnny's point and to all of the Hayward Island arguments and is Hayward a villain? Is not a villain. What is like, there's no denying the fact that what Wanda does in WandaVision, as much as we care about her and as much as yeah. we empathize and as much as we get it is shitty like she is the villain here and this is the moment where she really has to face it and when 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 agatha sort of snaps and frees dotty i mean yeah. how fucking sarah. awful yeah, sarah, yeah or sarah yeah. uh oh. and sarah and she goes she goes my name is sarah and, and like sarah's dotty slash sarah's desperation oh to yeah. be like, hey, my daughter, she's eight years old. She could be friends with your with your sons, or she could even yeah. be the bully. I don't care if you like that storyline. Like the desperation to be like, can I just hold my daughter? It right. was 
so heart-wrenching. And this is what's so great like about the show is that we're on Wanda's side. We love Wanda. We've watched Wanda yeah. through all the movies. We've watched her through the show. Yeah. But you're watching this and you're like, this, this is fucked. And, yeah. and Agatha just kind of being like, look, when Wanda's like, you're making her do this. And she's like, these are your meat puppets. I just cut the string. Like, I'm like, this is all you, sis. Like, yeah. it was great. And it sort of teed us up for the scene that's coming up, which was even more brutal. But to your point, like, they don't make any bones. Like, they are not trying to excuse Wanda's actions. They're not trying to get to the end and be like, guys, she was really a good guy all along. Because no. that's not who Wanda Maximoff is. Like, remember, this is the character in the comics who the yeah. setup for House of M is the X-Men and the Avengers getting together and going, so Wanda's kind of crazy and she's so powerful. I kind of feel like even though we're all heroes, we kind of got to kill her. Like, mm -hmm. we we really have, like, that's the setup for House of M is here's a character who's so powerful that we love her, but we have to kill her. And I think that that's what they're clearly setting up here is a character who we love, the Avengers, the heroes in the MCU love, mm -hmm. but she's, she's clearly going down a road where you're like, no one should have that much power. And so I think this was yeah. the beginnings of a road that's going to be very satisfying going down the line in the MCU. Yeah, Emma, yeah. I go to you now. I mean, we yeah, we saw what's it's Dottie slash Sarah said the desperation in her voice. Also, the other character, the other actress there playing the character, like her talking about, please tell my husband I love him and keep yeah. him away Ooh. from here. There is such pain in these people's voices, and she resists it at first, and now she has to confront it. Uh, you know, you mentioned this thing that your your friend wrote about, and I'm I'm thinking about it now as we look at this scene, like. As, as and I hope I'm saying this like as a woman when you mm. look at this navigation look at what she's being confronted are the, do you sense a connection to what she's going through or is it more of a human exploration of grief here in this moment it's it's a little of both um okay. as a woman I definitely see it from the perspective of uh, as women we are so often put in the role of the caretaker mm. And so I think that in Wanda's case, what what she was hoping, and I mean, she even says this to Deborah Jo Rupp when she's saying like, please, if you're not gonna release us, then at least kill us. Yeah, let us die. Um, yeah. Let us die. Um, that, you know, Wanda in that moment is trying to convince her herself. She's trying to convince herself, no, the thing that I did, I helped you all. You're happy. I made this a good place. Right. Somebody, you know, I can't believe that in our last review, none of us thought like, oh, the reason Westview was so oh decimated God. was because of the snap. This is the blip, yeah. <laughs> but this is I... the thing, y'all. This, but no, but this is the world we live in. This is the world we live yeah. in right now. That it feels very realistic that a town could go into Look, total, into that's total a great decay point. after I was, through a pandemic. I was trapped. And, so many people I was out of I work. was trapped in a garage. I was trapped in a garage. I have an excuse. I was it was not my best week. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, Emma, yeah. But what I but what I'm saying is that uh, is again it's like so Wanda really in order to be okay with what she has done and with yeah. really like embracing this level of power that she has is she is trying to convince herself that she has truly helped these people because the reality of the fact that your own actions were selfish yeah. and were self-serving is really something that we are like, uh, you know, I think it's getting better, but like as a society, like not okay yeah. with women doing things for themselves. And that is exactly what Wanda did. Uh, you know, again, like I, from the expert, you know, the they sort of justify it with this idea of grief and we have tremendous empathy for that. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least I do anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. uh, but at the same time, it's like we recognize that what she is doing is incredibly selfish and she's like coming to terms with the fact that like her actions have like hurt others. Yeah. And hey, listen, I, as we were preparing for this review and I was watching it a third time and my girlfriend is sitting next to me and I'm just making these comments out loud to myself as I'm writing these notes and she goes, honey, wait a minute. What about the other male heroes and the things they've done in the MCU films? Have they done anything close to this? And it gave me pause just for mm -hmm. a second because I was like, wow, I hadn't. She's like, Tony was selling weapons before yep. he found, uh, you know, Jesus or whatever and, and stopped doing that. But those weapons were killing people and he conveniently didn't care. Those kinds of things you have to explore. And so some of that in my mind, I was like, yeah, maybe there's a little more understanding here, a little more of a larger view I can take on this. It isn't great what she's doing, but no, again, no. It's like you know. It, then again, it's like, well, 
this is her journey and her power. So it's challenging for exactly. us to watch it. And even yes. Agatha challenges her and says, a superhero wouldn't do this. Kind of a meta moment at that time. Oh, yeah. Right? And, and yeah. this is the thing is that, you know, previously Wanda had said when confronted by Monica Rambeau, like, oh, you know, she's like, you're not the villain. You don't have yeah. to be the villain. And she says, what if I already am? Right. And I think that, you know, there was a level of that that Wanda was so living in her own sort of like, again, this this reality that she had created around herself. And she's saying, you know, I've basically one of my one of my favorite tropes ever are, are people who are villainous characters who realize that they have been bad uh, and they go, you know what? I have gone too far and I can't turn back from this. Um, right, and right. so that that was very much that moment for her of like, no matter what I've done, I am happy. Um, right. And we're so not okay with with women, especially I think, mm. being happy. Um, right. Okay. And and so again, though, we're now seeing her like really come to terms with mm -hmm. what she has done. And like as the audience, I don't think we are meant to feel badly for her in that moment. Like yeah. we are meant to be confronted. Yeah. With the with like how dire and bad the thing she has done is yeah right 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 yeah and i was gonna i was sorry i was gonna say as well like uh, in, in episode eight when she's driving into westview and we're seeing all of these residents that we've known through the sitcoms and we're seeing what sort of a dire state the town is in as a result of the blip yeah. um we're not the only one seeing it yeah. Wanda's seeing it too yeah like she you know she is not the only one experiencing the grief like she is surrounded by grief so from her point of view like again they talk about she's never done anything like this before yeah she doesn't know uh, uh what is going to be sort of the residual effects of using this much power so the fact that one and and, and fietro kind of confirms it you know in the in the halloween episode where he's just like look what you're doing is great what you're doing is nice you're keeping people together people have better jobs they seem happy Right. So to find out for the first time that no, what you're doing is is awful. Like like she knew she was mind controlling them, but at the same time she thought she was making them better. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, yeah. And and this is a pivotal scene, I think, as well. If I throw my two cents in here, because this is Wanda saying, "No, I'm good. I'm a good person. I'm doing good things." And Agatha saying, "No, no, you don't mm -hmm. understand how much power you actually have." here and you need to be aware kind of almost a backward less or a backdoors lesson here you need to be aware of what your power is capable of that's why i watch your power because i want right. to do what you do but you're and you're insisting on this hero business and you're trying almost to be reductive hero versus villain when your power is so far beyond those small terms in her yes what, what, in, in her like a perspective do you know what i'm saying so that's what i think is different here and when you look at this scene. also addressing the idea that wanda being in these people's heads has not been all rainbows and butterflies and oh, happy sitcom not. life yeah. like they are all feeling her grief and yeah. her loneliness and her sadness because they are the products of that. Like that yeah. is what the power is that is controlling these people. Yeah, and they were already well, there with the blip. Yes. Now you add Wanda's <laughs> Yes, feelings. exactly. It's like, it's like depth. So yeah, go ahead, Mike. And again, this is all like total shades of House of M where mm -hmm. Wanda creates a reality and the reality is everybody gets their secret heart's desire. Like you're living in a world where you have everything and the parallel to you're living in, a, in, a, in an idyllic sitcom but yeah. as House of M reveals and as this show reveals like you're still being controlled you still yeah. were manipulated and that's yeah. still not cool and so yeah. I think that you know this again everything you guys are saying is correct and it's just great to see how they're taking sort of the Wanda from the comics translating it into the MCU in a very fresh and new and different way but still yeah. hitting all those points that make Wanda Wanda. A thousand mm -hmm. percent agree. And before we get to, before the show lets us get too deep or too serious, just like a radio station, they'll play a sad song and they turn around and play you a song of action. We jump into this moment here. Ladies and gentlemen, we've arrived at the boner moment. We're back to <laughs> Pietro and Monica. <laughs> this is so weird. Pietro keeps calling Agatha his missus. Monica is sitting in I, what I assume is some kind of old chair from the 70s. She pulls out a bill that has Ralph's name on it and then pulls out a headshot. This is the Mandarin <laughs> moment from Iron Man 3, and it says Ralph Boner, and she says it. He repeats it with a kind of, I don't know, Beavis and Butthead snicker, uh, and then she wants to know, and then he like she wants to know how he's being controlled. He kind of messes around and says, you want to fight again? 
and she she subdues him, rips this necklace off, which she sees glowing purple, and he says, "Oh, please, don't hurt me, don't hurt me." And now she understands uh, what is what the situation was this whole time. So this has been Ralph. This guy is who Ralph was the whole time. So uh, Emma, what the hell? The boner moments. Talk to me here. <laughs> okay, can I just tell you? <laughs> I understand if people are mad about <laughs> yes. the age uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I thought it was so trolly. I loved it. <laughs> because Agnes has been talking nonstop about Ralph. My yeah. husband, Ralph. Oh, well, Ralph says this, that, and the other thing. Oh, uh, good old Ralph. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> to find out that Ralph is just this, like, stoner kid who like lives in an <laughs> attic in the house that agatha's living in it was amazing yeah. uh shannon someone <laughs> said freddie concepcion says i think boner was a little tip to growing pains as well yep. maybe maybe talk to me shannon. oh there's no no it definitely was <laughs> nice. yeah all right, all right it okay uh well we, we we wondered how agatha suddenly was able to live in the house next door to to wanda and it's because it's where ralph boner lives and she just wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> this this was just for me this was this did not land well um, yeah. and, 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 and this is a, this is a, this is a case of expectations versus reality 100%. Um, that we yeah. you know from episode one or two we were talking about who's Ralph who's Ralph who's Ralph is Ralph Mephisto is Ralph Dottie is, who's Ralph this this sort of nefarious presence out there and you find out it's this kid with an enchanta puka necklace on uh <laughs> it, it was just this was not one of my favorite this and the Jimmy Woo uh, uh escape th mm -hmm. these were not my favorite moments again <laughs> It's fine. Not a big deal. <laughs> the less said about it, the better, maybe. Well, fair enough, but it's, everyone's been talking about it. So, so I don't think you're gonna get you. Michael. All right. So, okay. First of all, as we've talked about, uh, you know, WandaVision is filled with sitcom nods and sitcom references. And Mike Seaver in Growing Pains, Kirk Cameron's best friend in Growing Pains, was Richard Milhouse Stabone, who went by the name Boner. Uh, yep. That was that was a as a kid I thought it as a kid I thought it was hilarious as a geeky adult who's talking about WandaVision uh, less so <laughs> but um, okay so a couple things one um, I, here's my actual issue with it and this is sort of my overall issue is I think that if casting Evan Peters as the sort of replacement P uh, Pietro was just literally an Easter egg nod, wink, wink, ha ha, look how funny we are. In the big scheme of what the Marvel Universe is doing, I think it was probably kind of a dumb move because <laughs> you had to know uh, that when you have the Multiverse of Madness open it coming up, when you have all these things coming up, that casting Evan Peters is going to like set off this shit storm. And it like, opens from you a, up to speculation. And, and like, and like to Emma's great. point, yeah, to Emma's point, from a trolling standpoint, fucking great. Like, great, good on you. <laughs> but yeah. from a sort of setting up the expectations, like, you know it's going to go down a road. And so I think sort of the reaction that people are having is not that, screw you, it had to be X, Y, hmm. or Z. It's more that, it's more that like, really, this is all you're doing with that? Uh, that so all that being said, I think that that's my issue with it. I kind of think it's funny. I think forevermore when I go back and binge WandaVision, every time Agatha talks about Ralph, I'm gonna be about like this fucker over here. Like I'm just gonna be like <laughs> rolling my eyes. Uh, but yeah, Monica uses her powers. She sees the puka necklace as a thing. He's freed. Kind of to Shannon's point, that's that's where we're at, and that's the end of Pietro. Like that's that's all we get, and that's where we're at with it. And okay, I I'll be really curious. Like I, this is one of those things where not like I'm holding out hope and they have to do anything. Like if this is all that Evan right. Peters is, and there happens to be a guy that happened to live in the house next door to that Vision bought for Wanda, who happens to look exactly like Pietro from another universe, and that's all we're ever gonna say about it. Okay. I could see them at some point trying to explain this in a multiversal sense, but we'll see if they try and do that or not. I'll be really curious to see if they ever touch it again or they don't. That's fine. Explain that, but also explain the basement. Is, is the basement Agatha's creation or did, and how does Ralph Boner own that house? By the way, given to him by his family? Like, I don't know the deal. I I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Ralph Boner is into some fucked up shit. Mm -hmm. That's and he's selling, that he's selling is, a that, lot of weed on the side. It's his creepy 
that's a sex that's a sex dungeon that's a sex dungeon it's, got it's a sex runes. dungeon it's got some runes uh, uh brian i've got notes leonard says ralph boner also happened to buy a house with a creepy magical basement that happened to be next door to the house vision bought for wanda no nah, he yeah. built that basement dog <laughs> for his He's sexual proclivity shit. <laughs> By I, way, I, shout out to our friend brian who's watching yeah i I, 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 uh, I, I think he's an airbnb squatter i, th I think whoever whoever the owners are yes <laughs> they were I actually oh, or it's a blip yeah, or the blip they're not there so he might as well squat in the house listen yeah, i've funny. seen people on twitter i've seen people on twitter saying that like ralph boner might have been jimmy woo's uh oh yeah uh, witness. Witness. Yeah, witness the witness, yeah. the witness. Yeah. he's the witness in the witness protection i will tell you this right now i can't to brian's point and i was actually texting with brian about this earlier <laughs> i don't know how you explain away that dungeon at the bottom of the house i feel like Ag that's agatha's pocket dungeon that she takes everywhere with her but i don't know like that's that's a whole explanation that i'm going to be really yeah. curious to see if they try and tackle if and this is a big if if ralph boner is jimmy woo's witness and if there is a reason that he's important to some case that somehow ties into a multiverse that somehow ties back to pietro from another universe i will be shocked floored amazed yeah impressed and yes. if they can pull it off i will clap for them for days i don't think that's the case but if they can pull that off that will be a fucking trick beyond all tricks I don't disagree with you there. That's for sure. All right. We're at 990 of you all watching us live. Oh, a thousand whoa. people. That's incredible. Dang. Please hit that like button as you're watching us, that thumbs up button in case it's your first time on YouTube. We would appreciate it. All right. Let's keep going here. After all of that happens, we go back to Vision and White Vision going at it. Kids are using their powers to see that Wanda is in trouble. They run off to help her. We go back to the square. More citizens now are starting to tell Wanda what is uh, happening, what they're feeling, what they're experiencing. They want her to relay messages to their family members. Wanda pushes back saying, you're all going to be fine. And they tell her, we have your nightmares. She's saying, I kept you safe here. They're, uh, uh, what's her, uh, I forget her name, Mrs. Hart kind of rolls back and says, Deborah Joe Rub says, yeah. we feel your pain. Yeah. Your, 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 your fear is poisoning us or your, sad, your grief is poisoning us. Let us go. The chorus grows and then she chokes them out whoa then she says she's sorry when she realizes what she's done and deborah Jo up says as, as emma mentioned if you won't let us go then let us die she says she'll she lets them go and we have a very biblical moment here where she parts the red energy field uh, moses parting the red sea to let her people go, but we see Oz the Great and Powerful on the marquee. Another reference. And by the way, who directed, who directed Oz the Great and Powerful? Sam Raimi. Who's Sam Raimi. Mm -hmm. members? Sam Raimi. Hayward sees this and, and finally sees his moment, sends his crew in as people are running away out of fear from this. All right. Uh, where, who am I going to? Oh, yeah. Mikey, what do you think of this? Uh, what do you think of this scene overall here, what we saw? I think the townspeople confronting Wanda is like maybe one of my top five moments in the entire episode. I thought it was okay. so powerful yes. and, and kind of to the ongoing discussion we have about villains, heroes, whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. this is Wanda. This, this is what we were talking about before in the earlier scene with Dottie kind of like yeah. multiplied by 10. This is Wanda being completely uh, confronted with this is what you did and her trying to excuse it. Uh, no, it was fine. It was better. You didn't feel pain. And just all of them together being like, we were dreaming your dreams. We felt your pain. And when Mrs. Hart says, if you won't let us go, just kill us. Like, yeah. the, the, that's where they're at. And then the fact that her first reaction is, I don't want to listen to this. I'm going to choke you. Uh, mm -hmm. You're really seeing this level of like Wanda dealing with these powers in a really interesting way like she doesn't know it, 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 it's wanda can it's wanda having a villain inside her and not wanting to deal with it but it's really there and i think this is going to be an ongoing thing that we're going to face again and again like wanda ultimately so far keeps coming out on top the hero keeps uh rising to the top but the villain is there uh, yeah. And she has the power to do it. And watching her choke those people out, like mm. just be like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Uh, it was powerful. Uh, and, and yes, she let them go. And yes, yeah. to Johnny's point, she parted the Red Sea of the Hex. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, I, and I also think that was really great um, just because you're seeing her, it, 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 
Agatha knows exactly what she's doing. Like yep. Wanda is going to try and do the right thing until in a few seconds, she's faced with what the cost of that is. Yep. And I think and that's, that's what's great about this episode. That's a great point, Mike. And Shannon, I go to you next on this. This is a fight, not just with powers, also a mental fight. You know, anybody who's ever been in a competition, mental game is just as important as your abilities and your skills. This is Agatha overwhelming her. This is her, as she says, cutting the strings of the meat puppets, and they all surround her, uh, unloading their grief, their sadness, their fear, their pain on top of Wanda that she has augmented by not knowing that she is instilling her own grief and pain in them. So this is almost like powers being exchanged without anything being shot out of people. It's that pain she's taking on and she tries to silence them in desperation. Why? She's still figuring out her powers as well and the extent of her powers, but it's a heck of a reaction, Shin. Yeah, it's the collateral damage of her actions, which she does mm. not understand. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I, ca I can't say shut up because the magic inside me is literally going to make these people shut up. Yeah. Like, right. when, when, she, when exactly. she choked them, that was not, that was she not deliberate. Like, no, she didn't yeah. need right. to do that. Like right. when you saw, and, and then, you know, because she was so overwhelmed in the moment, her first attempt to release them, it didn't work. Didn't work. Yeah. I mean, so she had to do it again. And that's the whole, that's the great thing with this Agatha Wanda dynamic, because yeah. in a way, Agatha's not wrong. <laughs> She's right. like, look, you, you are too powerful. Like mm -hmm. this, you are going to do, you are doing more harm than good. And you are going to continue to do more harm than good. This right. is what the prophecy says about you. You are going yeah. to bring about the end of the world. Right. We can stop well, it if you give this stuff to me. Yeah, Emma? And this was an important moment because you had to believe that Wanda, even though like, you know, from a, from a overall MCU standpoint, we mm. all were like, she's not gonna give her power to Agatha. But you had to believe for the stakes of the episode that she would consider mm -hmm. giving her powers over to Agatha because at the end of the day, Wanda wants to be good. Like that is what yeah. this this episode uh, it was about, was about her choosing to be good when she has the power to be literally anything she wants. Yeah. Yeah, good points. Uh, all right, we we move on here. Vision and Vision are fighting in the sky. Vision falls to the street. Hayward's people go in. He starts to fall apart because as she is, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking uh, opening the energy field, it is affecting Vision. Then her kids show up, and it starts to affect her kids. Ala, like we saw a few episodes ago, episodes ago, when Vision tried to leave the energy field, P they are falling apart. They are uh, coming to pieces, essentially. Agatha informs her that she has tied her family to this twisted world. Now, one cannot exist without the other. It's a nice twist on the whole idea of, a, I'm going to escape because you can't catch me and save those people, too. This is a nice little twist yeah. here. And then she mm. closes the energy field, uh, uh, Michael, and they're safe. But... Now, whoever didn't get out of the town is still stuck in the town, stuck in this state of arrested uh, emotional development, so to speak. Well, and this is what's great about the show is they've set up the stakes so clearly for us. It's like yeah. Wanda wants to be a good guy. She wants to be a hero. She's been an Avenger. Like yeah. she doesn't want if she once she realizes that these people don't want to be kept here against their will, that she hasn't really made their life better, that it's kind of horrific to be stuck in a sitcom. Um, she's like, okay, cool. I'm going to prove to you that I'm good. I'm going to let them go. And then to watch Vision, who is the entire reason that she's done this, mm -hmm. and her kids start to literally fall apart, like now the stakes for her emotionally are really clear. It's like, yeah. you can be a, and this is what's great, because to Emma's point, she was, you know, Emma, you were saying this is all about her choosing to be a hero, but it's also her choosing to be a hero over the mm -hmm. thing that she wants more than anything else. Like mm -hmm. this entire show is about Wanda wanted something so badly that her, but to Shannon's point actually, real. that <laughs> that without even knowing what she was doing, she made it real. Yeah. And she created, she created a life where she could have vision, where she could have this family. And she has the family and mm -hmm. that's good. And she can keep the family, but she can't be a hero. Or she can be a hero, but she can't keep the family. And right. to have that so visually laid out for us is great. Also, fun nod, uh, I didn't realize this. It looks familiar to me, but the way that Vision and the kids are falling apart, it's not quite like Endgame dusting, but what it does really reflect is, I believe it's the first issue of House of M. Mm. It's an image of Wanda 
and the pieces of her are kind of falling apart. Oh, and the yeah. way like and the way that vision yeah, yeah. And, and the way yeah. that vision and Tommy and Billy are falling apart is a really cool nod to that. Uh, also, watching your kids and the love of your life fall oh, apart like that as no. they're reaching for you. Yet I another, know. like I said, I, like I said I, earlier, brutal moment after brutal moment emotionally yeah. in this episode. I feel like this is the point that I started um the tears started um oh. and you know they just kind of kept yeah. going on some level until it was just like full on like ugly cry sobbing at the end of the episode <laughs> which we will get to um <laughs> I just want to say how much I love that little kid who plays Billy. <laughs> just love, like, his, his love. Sweet, like his sweet, kind energy yeah. is just so spot on for that character. I love it yep. so much. Who and was Luke. also in The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Oh my he God, is, yes he is. He's right. And he is a brilliant little oh. actor. So, what a so great good. little actor. I love well, him so much. Th and there are reports uh, online that those two kids have shot scenes in the multiverse of madness. We oh, may not I be love done. them. I don't want them to go away. Yeah, we may not be <laughs> done with them. Certainly the post credit scene would lead us to believe that possibly they're not done. All right. Uh, family is together now. Uh, and we get the, uh, as Michael might call this, the Incredibles moment. All four of them oh, it's together. So good. Uh, she uses her power as a shield, kind of like Invisible Woman, kind of like Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Incredible. There Can I just situation? say, I yeah. love Sue Storm so much specifically yeah. for the force field creating, and I feel like we didn't get enough of that in the Fantastic Four films, and they've never done her justice, and <laughs> Although, I just want to see her done right. That's fair. Also, but also, also in Scarlet Witch's kind of earliest incarnations in the comics, back when yeah. she was in the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, yeah. this, is also a, this is also a move that she had. Part of her magic was like the shield thing, so yep. it was completely uh like you which is odd when you look at like the references it's like there's the fantastic four the first family of comics there's the incredibles mm -hmm. and now you have this and each one of them has that sort of protector shield move yeah. um yeah pretty interesting yeah just then hayward and his people show up vision and wanted to give them a quick give the kids a quick pep talk oh. uh and take them into battle with no training at all but saying they were born for it uh vision uh, vision and white vision battle into the library he reveals that my program directive is to destroy the vision they battle until vision uses his logic to talk to vision explains he is a conditional vis vision which actually stops vision of course Logic is going to win out between these two sentient beings or somewhat sentient beings. The military guys turn their weapons towards Agatha. Agatha wings them up, and then Agatha says, same story, different century. There will always be pitchforks for ladies like us trying to find a connective moment there with Wanda. <laughs> don't know if it's real or don't know if she's manipulating her, but she's using that tactic. Uh, Wanda says, boys, handle the military. Mommy, will be right back. The kids disarm the soldiers. And then Hayward comes out as Monica arrives and shoots the kids. So let's just stop here. <laughs> oh, Monica stops the bullets. That's a lot. They compliment each other. But yeah, yeah let's stop yeah. here. Shannon first. I don't take know. This Do you first. think that oh. Hayward might be a villain? No. <laughs> you know what? I kind of feel like I don't know. I'm like, I, like I. There's been kids that I've been really upset with in the past, and I feel like it's like justified. I mean, at uh, least Agatha only <laughs> bit a kid once, didn't uh, shoot a kid. <laughs> as, as Jessica Rabbit once said, he's not a villain. He's just written that way. Anyway, uh, go, what, 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 Shannon, you take those first steps in the scene. Yeah, Johnny, on. I want to be here for you. I've been on a plane with a screaming kid. Yeah. So I, I mean, <laughs> oh no, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't shoot a kid, but like, I just thought that moment was completely unearned, and I thought it was like, come on, we get it. He's a bad guy. He's not gonna shoot the fucking kids. Okay. The kids are not even real. The that's, kids are not even real. Okay, but I think real. that's why maybe he would shoot the kids is because on a level he knows that they're not real. Yeah, yeah I can make I can make the John Roca. I can but make the John Roca that. argument. He yeah, doesn't know ahead. those kids aren't real. He doesn't know that Wanda is has manufactured has many has manifested these kids. He he actually doesn't know that. Um, but he does he doesn't know that. He, he knows that she manifested Vision. He knows the people in the oh, town you're right. are real. He doesn't have a dossier no, on every child. But he has seen the, the kids. On, but he's seen the kids on the TV show yeah, and the fact that they just you know yeah. quickly yeah. aged yeah. up from baby to ten. Yep. Oh, no, see I, everybody in the chat, correct? 
guys, he's a I bad retract. Guy. He is a fucking bad guy. I get that. <laughs> I'm saying I don't like the way the writers wanted to make scrolling. it really, really clear <laughs> that he was a bad guy. Listen. Having him shoot the kids is <laughs> unheard. Listen, unheard. John. Listen, John. Yes. You sailed. You sailed your boat to Hayward Island. You I made did. your camp. You I, made your I camp on Hayward Beach. <laughs> you have to live. You have to live with the island choices you made. I do, but I can change my. I'm paddling away, but I'm mad at the writers for writing that island. I'll just say that right now. So I will. I, I, I've 100% retract my statement from before that Hayward doesn't know that they're real. Yeah. The thing that I want to talk about is that yeah, moment please. with Monica. Um, yeah. which was fantastic because we all agree that we didn't get as much of her as we would like. She was this moment, though, yeah. was great because she is still discovering her powers. To me, when she jumps in front of those kids, she doesn't know those bullets are going to phase through her. Like, this right. is a person who is making a sacrifice because, one, she was there for the birth of these children. Yeah. Like, she actually, she, you know, she helped take one out of Wanda. But at the same time, I think she recognizes the danger of Wanda as well. It's like, listen, yeah. she. this is what she did when she lost all this other stuff. If she loses her kids, mm -hmm. she is dangling by a thread. Who knows what's gonna happen to everybody if if Hayward is able to shoot these children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, I wanna say something, I, you know, I, this is my honest feeling about it and some of you may have an issue with it. And I, to I totally respect everybody giving me shit for the Hayward, <laughs> I respect it. I've admi I'm admitting, I was like, own that shit. I just admitted it. And someone said, you had to make it, uh, they had to make it obvious. I. It's not cause I didn't, believe he was it was more a matter of like i wanted to believe there was more here and then there wasn't so i was no. disappointed by that but i will say this and this is where i might get into trouble but i feel this way as i was watching it don't introduce a powerful black female superhero sideline her for a majority of the finale have her only come in to save the white kids and then she's out and i just think to me there i wanted more if you're going to introduce monica we're talking about all this, yep. you know, post stuff. Just give me more. Let her show her powers. Let her help in, in some way. Let her I, be a part of it. So I have to that say was my problem. that, that was my no, issue. I agree. She she was. This is the thing is, do I think that Monica was wasted as a character in this series? No. Yeah. Do I think that she was underutilized towards the end of it, particularly in this episode? Yes. Yeah. I my feeling is it's difficult because it feels like they had to make a choice between Agatha and Monica as right. far as like getting that character development towards the end of yep. the series. In a lot of ways, it may have, it would have made perhaps for a stronger series mm -hmm. if for some reason it was Monica who was taking Wanda on her journey through her past. Yeah. Now, from the standpoint of Agatha has the power to do that, it made sense. Right. From an emotional journey standpoint, I think it might've worked better with Monica. I agree with you, Emma. And I, Michael, you brought this up, so we go to you next. You said it episodes ago that Monica was gonna be the one to walk her through this grief, connect with the grief, and they kind of dropped the ball a little well, bit here, don't you think? So yeah, I think, I think a few things about this, actually. I think, I thought, I thought the same thing that you did, Johnny, about it, a black woman. And, and look, when they shot this, when they wrote this, it was before the summer that we've all lived through. But yes, a black woman jumping in front of bullets to save white kids definitely uh, struck me. Like I just, look, it, it, it I, I clocked been, it. it. I clocked been it. The summer, but Black Panther had been out for two years. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um. But I, this is what I'm talking about when I was saying earlier that you get to your you get to your final episode, mm. you get to your third act, and you're moving all of these pieces on the board, and you have a limited amount of time, and we don't know what the first draft of this script yeah, looked like, yeah. and you didn't know how you had, like what you had to cut down, and 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 Monica definitely felt like she got cut down in in a ways that I wish she hadn't. Um, but I so a couple things. I know I give you shit about Hayward Island, yeah, uh, but. I also agree with you that Hayward just getting out of the truck and yeah. shooting some kids was like, okay, <laughs> all right, come on. <laughs> like, I already think you're a dick, but I don't even, I don't even know that I believe that you're this much of a dick. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, and, and actually, not I'm, I'm not trying to like armchair quarterback. Like I, I think these guys who did this show did an amazing job. I don't think yeah. I could do a, a more. I don't think I could do a more amazing job. But so much was set up between Monica and Hayward yeah. uh, throughout yeah. the series. Uh, there was such a um, Hayward sort of dissing Monica. 
Hayward so implied, like, yeah. it was very much implied that Hayward got the job that Monica should have had because Monica had blipped out. Right. Yeah. And so, Monica, I really kind of, I, all of the uh, kind of systemic race issues aside about Monica jumping through, it was a great hero moment for Monica. Yeah. But I yeah. feel like it would have it would have made us all feel a little bit better about Monica if, Mo- like, as much as we know that Wanda is dealing with Agatha and Vision is dealing with Vision, it yeah. really felt like the villain that Monica had to face was Hayward, yeah. and she kind of didn't. And it, yeah, and, and we didn't really get it a satisfying and, Monica versus Hayward. Yeah. And so yeah. if you yeah. if you had had a if you had a Wanda dealing with magic, Vision dealing with technology, Monica dealing with government, like 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 there was there was a road where all three heroes had their role to play yeah. and like i said like i i don't blame them for this they had a lot to do and they stuck 90 percent of it so i think that they did it but i think that would have been a way that we could have utilized monica a little bit better i would have liked seeing monica work with the kids like them to- them do totally. some kind of mini yeah. team thing I mean, that not- would have been better I think it was a little bit of a team up, if I'm being completely honest. And I mean, mm. they have the commentary of, you know, the bullets pass through her right, and right. Um, uh, little Billy's able to stop the bullets with his magic. Um, right. So, you know, we are definitely we got the idea of them all kind of teaming up. And you basically mm. are exploring three characters who have who, you know, because in the case of the kids, they were just born. In the case of Monica, she was just sort of born anew with superpowers that you have all of these sort of like young superheroes teaming up um yeah i loved the nice tricks line uh but i you know again i I fully am in support of the way that they handled monica in terms of her like just discovering her powers you know what i mean like like if she had like uh, my my issue is not with them under utilizing her as a superhero in this and we know there's so much more story to come with monica but yeah i i just i think i would have liked to see a little bit more from the final confrontation between herself and hayward even involving the kids would be really fun. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Even though i even though i liked what happened to Hayward. well yeah i I will say I, I will say like two two moments just to call out because like as we're talking about the stuff that doesn't work. Yeah. Um, first of all, Billy pulling full ten year old gay Neo was very exciting to me. <laughs> like like I was very excited about little baby gay Neo being like I can stop bullets. And as much as the Pietro stuff stresses me out, Tommy pulling a full uh, I'm gonna be just like my uncle and steal the government guy's hat just right. like Pietro did in Days of Future Past, was yeah. also like a very, very fun nod. So, yeah. and, like, and the sunglasses. And the sunglasses. And the, sungla- and the sunglasses. And the goggles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shannon, any final words before we move on to the next thing? Yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, I understand I understand where you guys are coming from. I guess I just didn't see it like that. I saw okay. she's a hero. She's doing it. She's doing a hero thing. Oh, and the absolute. fact that she didn't oh, yeah, know yeah. she was going uh, to survive. No, I, 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 I don't I, think I get that any point, of us are. I, I get the point of view. Yeah. I get the yeah. point of view. But I guess I just, I don't see it that way. And I do think, you know, we could have had a little bit of a longer episode because I, I hadn't thought about the, the team up of, of Monica and the kids. That would have been great. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, why resist it? Why not have a, a few more minutes? Because th- as Emma said, they did such a great job introducing I, Monica and building her yeah. story. So people are like, oh, this is about Wanda. Don't cop out like that. You, They yeah. spent a lot of time building up the Monica situation to not stick the landing fully and let her show yeah. more of her powers. I, I will, thought was a mistake. And I will just say- her with Pietro, I thought was a bit of a of a under undercutting her power as well. But go, Michael, so good. Yeah. I, I will just say this. I will just say this. And I see Brian Leonard in the chat who, oh, of course. I have, who I've been an executive with, who is saying exactly what I'm about to say, <laughs> um, that, uh, that minutes equal dollars. And I, mm-hmm. I promise you, like, I, I think you're dead on, like seeing Monica with the kids and her turning to Billy and saying nice trick. And he's like, you too. I think, and I could be a hundred percent wrong. I think in the first version of this script, Monica, Monica and oh. the kids did some awesome shit. And yep. I think that when you got to actually production and looking at what the budget was that they had for this show yep. and looking at where you're going to spend your dollars, I think that they said, and look, they were probably right at the end of the day, but I think they went, look, you have this, you have this amount of money for, you have this, this is your effects budget. Mm-hmm. This is how much we can shoot. What do you want to do? 
And、mm-hmm. they chose to put their money towards Wanda and Vision because those are the names、yeah. in the title, and that they probably ended up having to cut. Some Monica stuff, some Billy stuff, some Tommy stuff, because this episode was so big,、um, and, and that's not to say that it that they were that, that it's that that we're not all correct. Like I think we all wanted to see that, and I、yeah. think that if if the director, if the writers, if the producers all sat in a room and were really open and honest with everybody, they'd probably tell us that that was their intention as well. Yeah, and it was just a money issue. Yeah, but I'm tired of money issues sacrificing characters of color, Mike. I'd like to sacrifice some of the other characters before they start sacrificing, which has been the pattern for decades. So I hope they start breaking that pattern more and more. But a lot of people are saying this is just introducing Monica. We're going to get Monica more in the MCU. Certainly, when we get to that mid-credit scene, very indicative that we're going to see、yep. more and more of her. So, but it was nice absolutely to get, nice to get a taste of her powers and certainly reminiscent of the comics. Energy messing with energy, any plus the yellow color. Does that mean a Mind Stone thing? I don't know. But certainly pretty cool to see her、uh, being able to use her powers. All right, let's move on here. And by the way, please keep sending in your Streamlabs and Super Chats. We're going to answer them at,、yeah. in, in just a little bit. So please, and thank you to the gentleman who just put in a hundred dollars and referenced、uh, the red shirt guy from way back <laughs> when. I appreciate. It. It's been a long time since I heard that joke at my expense. All right, anyway, let's move on.、Uh, uh, okay, uh, okay. Hayward takes off and Dar.、Uh, yeah, and then we get Darcy showing up out of nowhere. We do know that. Then we have this fantastic conversation between Vision and Vision in the library. By the way, Brian Leonard, I coined that term. Way to catch up and show up twenty minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> But they have this conversation about the ship of Theseus and this idea of which is the actual true ship. The ship with the the ship that's been uh, uh, you know corrected or the other ship, and it's basically uh, uh, you know confronting that there are two. Visions here. One has the rot, which is the memories, and that's、mm-hmm. the Westview vision. And one has the cleaner boat, which is the White vision. And so that moment stops them. They have this conversation, and then Vision, Westview vision, puts his memories inside of White vision. And that is such a brilliant moment because look, just in the comics. Nobody dies. Everybody, most everybody came back after the blip. All the heroes came back. You know, Gamora. We'll see what happens with her. Black Widow did not, but most everybody came back hero wise. Now, how do you resuscitate Vision? You have someone else bring the power, bring it back to life through、uh, Wanda's powers, and then、mm-hmm. put those memories in there, but not necessarily the feelings, just the memories. So the great Jedi of West Coast, oh sorry, great, <laughs> great Vision of West Coast, <laughs> great sorry Jedi, about that. <laughs> the great Paladins. I'm joking, but the great Vision can now exist. The idea of the great Vision can now exist in West Coast Avengers, which will be interesting down the road when we get to that line between them. Anyway, we get all of that great conversation. Let's just stop there. Uh, 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 Emma, what did you think about this back and forth between them and this great philosophical conversation? Okay, so this, this was the most perfect battle for a Vision、yeah. versus Vision. Yes, yeah. yes. Vision is the Avengers philosopher.、Yeah. So the fact that it ended up being a battle of logic and philosophy was absolutely brilliant to me. The paradox of the ship of Theseus. And the you know the ship that's in a museum and it's rotting and it's going over time and they replace all of the parts gradually so that people can still see it. it and and then it no longer has any of what made it the ship that Theseus actually touched. Right.、Um, and and like applying that concept to Vision and the fact that Vision, White Vision, who is made up of the like physical parts of Vision. Still had at his core that logical being, and that's what defeated him. Was basically、right. like seeing the logic of that argument,、yeah. and the fact that like Wanda's vision, Westview vision, like puts his memories inside of it. It's like Data, Star Trek: The Next Generation,、mm. without the emotion chip. You know、yeah. what I mean? Like he has、yeah. all the memories, he has all the data downloaded to his brain, right? But he is not per se. The same vision, because as far as White Vision is concerned, he hasn't lived the life of the other Vision, who has developed the ability to feel. I mean, we saw him、yeah. at the beginning of that in the last episode in that flashback with Wanda. Yeah, 
Absolutely. I, and I dug it. And anyway, I'm sorry, uh, the people in the chat are correct. He unlocked the memories. I'm sorry. I saw him unlocked reach the memories. Out, so yes. he unlocked no, they the were memories, still so they were still stored in him. Yeah, so he yeah, exactly. He literally had, just unlocks the memories. But... Exactly. They had sh uh, uh, sh walled them off and then Yeah. He unlocked but them then you're sure. still living with the paradox of is this vision at all because he right. doesn't have the experiences of vision all right. of the experiences of vision are in this memory of vision that wanda right. created you can put yeah. the rotted planks back on the ship doesn't make that ship the, that ship again. yes yeah right exactly shannon what'd you think this was my favorite battle in the entire <laughs> oh. in, the, in the entire show yeah. um uh it's like it was an intellectual when, battle yes well yeah i mean it's like when you have two people of the same power <laughs> that yeah. like it's it's going to be like it, it's a tug of war that'll never end mm -hmm. um but then when you ha when you have the vision who has the memories who has the experience be able to relate to the vision who who doesn't that was just fantastic and the the moment where he does unlock he, he touches whatever the mind stone replacement is like he touches that and you see his eyes change you see his eyes become the way that memory yeah. visions is and like i i got it like I, i'd probably wrong here but i mean <laughs> what i got when white when vision basically says i am vision like he, he you know he He's recognizing it, but I think he's also deciding it. And yeah. and, yeah. and I got I got a call back to Tony Stark at the end of Iron Man. Right. I am yeah. Iron Man. I am Iron, I am Iron Man. Man. Yep. And of course, Tony Stark created Vision. So yeah, yep. that all yep. makes sense through Jarvis. Mikey. Yeah, I I love like of all the things that we thought were gonna happen between Vision and Vision, uh, this was not anything that anybody thought. But this was yeah. great. This is one of those moments that I can actually see the writers pitching to people, being like, "Hey, here's what's gonna happen." So vision, <laughs> vision, vision versus vision. And everyone's like, yeah, they have the same powers. They can both phase. Yeah, they get in a fucking crazy battle. Yeah, then they talk philosophy. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, like you can just see it, but it works so perfectly. It's exactly what needs to happen. It's exactly, yeah. and it's thrilling. It's, and it's, it's great to say that a conversation between two robots floating in a library yeah. is like one of the highlights of the episode, but it really, yeah. really is. And also like the whole Theseus, uh, the whole the the whole ship of Theseus philosophy exercise is really an exercise in identity. Like yeah. it's an ex it's an exercise in what makes a thing a thing. Like what makes yes. this what it is. And so you have one thing, like like Emma was saying, like you have one thing that's Vision's body that lived all the experiences of Vision, and you have another thing that thought that has all the memories of Vision. Yeah. And both of them are like, neither of us are Vision, and both of us are Vision, and we don't know what this means. And to stop in the middle of this epic third act superhero special effects showdown, to have sort of like a breakdown of like, what does identity mean? Yeah. It's so yeah. weird and crazy and awesome, and I just loved it. And the other part of this is just sort of looking ahead towards where the MCU is going is there's going to be something really interesting down the road because the vision that Wanda loves is gone. Yeah. 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 And this other vision who is the body that Wanda loved mm -hmm. and has the memories, knows who Wanda is, but isn't the guy she loves. Like right. when the, when yep. these two meet again, wherever that happens, whether it's in Doctor Strange or whether it's further down the line, cause he just flew off to, you know, like, I don't know, go to like fucking Burning Man and find himself because that's <laughs> probably where he I, would go. I guarantee um, he would not go to Burning Man. He might go to Comic-Con, but he's not going to fucking Burning Man. Okay. I'm going to go to Burning Man, and I'm going to see him on, like, a giant flaming boar, and I'm going to have a chat with him. But, like, can no, you, but I just think that, imagine like... imagine what White Vision would look like after a few days of oh Burning Man with all God. that dust? It's a dusty, it's a dusty... Uh, but no, crazy. but I just think, I just think that, like, I just think that, like, Wanda and... Because, like, what... This is, like, a really typical thing that you do in, like, like yeah. Superman comics or whatever, but, like... Like, there's an opportunity for us to have this whole arc where Wanda and Vision get to meet again for the first time and fall in love again. And it's going to be so much meaningful for us because we're going to have been through all of this. And yeah. I really am excited to see if they can get there. Like, it's, it's a cool thing. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's see here. Where, okay, Vision goes out, uh, yeah, out of the the uh, library there. The kids run up. Agatha looks on, and Wanda goes inside her mind, which is an interesting reference 
back to her Avengers mm -hmm. Age of Ultron days. She sneaks up on you, whispers in your ear, does her witchy hand gestures. It goes inside her mind, taking her back to the flashback we saw a few few episodes, or uh, last episode, I guess, where we saw Agatha being tied to the stake with the witches around her and her mother. But then Agatha turns it around on Wanda. Those witches come to life, including Agatha's mother, and they tie Wanda up uh, to the stake. Uh, they go after her being the Scarlet Witch. They call her the Harbinger of Chaos. Agatha says the power isn't a problem. It's knowledge. Once again, still guiding her, even mm -hmm. though they, she's battling her. So it's a, it's a nice twist on this relationship that we've seen from the comics. Yeah. As Wanda creates the Scarlet Witch crown, Agatha asks for Wanda's power. She will leave them in the, and she will leave them in her fantasy of Westview. Then Wanda rejects it, destroys the witches, jumps at Agatha. We're back in the sky. And then Wanda tells her to take her power and start shooting her magic at Agatha. And then conveniently keeps missing her and hitting the walls of the energy field, which is really curious. And we'll find just a little bit later. But then she stops Vision from helping. Uh, it's an incredible visual watching them battle all across the sky. And we hear Agatha cackling, Agatha, say, Agatha saying, telling her to release her burden, that she wants it all. Wanda sends it all to her, and Agatha absorbs it as she laughs. And we get a little Wanda zombie look. Hello, zombie Avengers. Agatha tries to change the deal, says the world will always be broken, tries to unleash her power, and nothing comes out. Wanda comes back to life and then embraces her power. And we see the runes, and we see the Scarlet Witch. Emma, talk to me about this whole fucking oh. battle between these two women. So incredible. Man, okay, well, I loved seeing the homage to her Age of Ultron powers, 100% nah. yep. going going into Agatha's memories um, and reliving that moment. Because like we had talked about that moment and that idea of, okay, what was going on with Agatha? Yeah. Was she doing this on purpose? Or was she honestly somebody who had innocently come by these powers because she wanted to be more powerful and right. then all these other witches are accusing her of stealing this power and she just doesn't roll over and die because that's just not the kind of person that she is. Yeah. Um. But, you know, again, Wanda's confronting her saying the difference between you and I is that you did this on purpose. Right, right. Right, Which was point. such an important moment of, of, again, like understanding that distinction between them. But instead of these witches whom Agatha stole the power of in this like weird flashback universe, effectively, that Wanda's created within Agatha's mind, yeah. they turn on her because she is the Scarlet Witch. She has no coven. She is meant to destroy the universe. So that like over shadows the idea that Agatha is somebody who has stolen the power from yeah. all of these witches. And again, it's like, and, and Wanda even the, the thing about Wanda is that like, she's so, so powerful. And I think about the line in, uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, mm. when Galadriel tells Frodo that to bear a ring of power is to be alone. And Wanda is so powerful that like being alone is kind of part of her yeah. fate in a yeah. way. Yeah, good point. Um, yeah. And that is, and she truly like has to accept that mm -hmm. in this moment. Like she rejects all of these women sort of like teaming up against her with their powers and, you know, transports back to the real world. Yeah. The reveal with the oh. runes. Woo! Woo! Yeah, that boy! Was great. That was great. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> that was amazing. And the fact that her her exact words to Agatha is like, thanks for the lesson. Yeah. God damn, that was good. <laughs> Which is, again, a nice twist on their relationship from the yeah. comics. Agatha is supposed to be this guy, Mike. Uh, also, Agatha does say, oh, God, you don't know what you've done uh, mm -hmm. in that. But we see a such a woman who is embracing her power through the journey of her grief, right? Coming out mm -hmm. the other side, you know, for people who are watching or listening to us who have gone through the grief and understand yeah. how it changes you down the road, you know what this moment is like. You know that grief changes you. If you can navigate your way through the process and come out the other side, it does change you. It makes you stronger. It makes you harder. It makes you more aware of the world. And it puts a new armor on you, a new uniform, shall we say, because you're kind of a new person walking out of it. And I thought that's what really came through very clearly 
in this moment. And Emma, you bring up an excellent point. Wanda is still figuring out her powers. Mm -hmm. Agatha knew what she was doing. Yeah. And there's mm -hmm. a difference there, right? And that's what I think is so important. Mikey, what'd you think of this? No, I thought it was great. I mean, to Emma's point, like just seeing Wanda do the exact move from Age of Ultron mm. gave me like a little geek buzz. Like I just really <laughs> enjoyed her kind of like coming up in the weird way and like doing her thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a little, like, I wasn't 100% sure if, like, the witches turned on her because she was that dangerous or if Agatha was so powerful that she could control her her yeah. mind and be like, I'm yeah. going to turn this against you. Either way, it didn't matter. It was awesome. The most awesome part and the most important thing was Wanda's uh, helm appearing, like the Scarlet Witch helm appearing for the first so time good. in the in the in the same way that Agatha's mom's sort of crown appeared at the beginning of episode eight last week. That was great. And then, you know, like like Johnny said, like they kind of like they they jump out back into reality. The fight continues. They go up. She's like, no vision. I got to do this on my own. Yeah. She goes zombie, uh, really reminding me of Megara from Hercules because I'm a Disney nerd. So anytime a woman gets emaciated, I'm like, it's Meg. Um, the runes moment, the runes moment was great because it's always, and again, this is one of those third act things that's really hard is... Yeah having something that is both surprising and expected at the same time. Yeah. Like yeah. that is a really, that is, when you can nail that moment, it's like gold. And you have this whole thing and we're watching Wanda and the, the power is getting sucked into Agatha and you're like, oh shit, I know Wanda's gonna pull through, but like what's gonna happen? And when the rune appears behind her <laughs> and you remember the episode before, you're like, fuck, this is her room. Westview is her room. These are the runes. It was so, so satisfying and very reminiscent as much as Vision's I Am Vision was reminiscent of Tony's I Am Iron Man. I guess this is just going to be a Marvel thing is when a villain goes to do their power and it doesn't work because Thanos was like, I am inevitable. Oh shit, why aren't my powers working? And yeah. Agatha was, and Agatha was like, Ugh! <laughs> like what's going on um it was just it was all so so satisfying and then watching wanda kind of like recover from the zombie yeah. and then like the helm appears and yeah. then we fully see scarlet witch in her costume for the first time like yeah. i was all i could think of was every fucking scarlet witch <laughs> fan in the world who went <laughs> who went to go see Age of Ultron and said, well, I'm glad Scarlet Witch was in the movie, but she wasn't really like the Scarlet Witch that I wanted. And I'm glad. <laughs> I mean, the red jacket but, was cool, but. Like it was, like it was, like it was cool, but like whatever. So, like this was like, holy shit, tens across the board. Shantae, you stay. Like it was happening. Like, literally as all of this was going down and we were seeing the crown appear and, and all, all the various things, my dad texted me after the last episode and was like, oh, finally, they finally called her Scarlet Witch. He's like, I loved the X-Men comics in the 60s. And I was like, okay, dad, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, so, so I, yeah. but I have to tell you as somebody that does love Scarlet Witch, I was like watching and I'm like, I literally yelled at my screen. I was like, I need to see her in the costume. <laughs> and then she's just like magical girl transformed into Scarlet Witch and it was everything I wanted. Absolutely. By the way, Erica Mason, I see you leaving your comments. You're clearly working out something inside yeah. yourself. Try being respectful instead of being a jerk. Just yeah. please have your comments, have your problems, have your issues. But none of us are shills. We've been pointing out things we don't like and we do like about the episode. That's what we do here. Have a little respect for what we're doing, please. All right, Shannon, talk to me about this scene for yourself. What did you think? Did you love seeing how uh, her look and how she was coming down? Full yeah. looks. And Elizabeth Olsen saying... Great. They, I, I don't like that I, could, I had to show so much cleavage in my other outfits. This is so much better. She said this in an interview. So it is a badass look for sure. Such yeah, a badass and, 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 we, and we got a glimpse of it in the marketing materials very early on when 
Wanda and Vision were standing in it behind those televisions in their sort of 50s garb. And on the television screens, you could see see their outfits. And so you, we got a glimpse of it already. It was just like, oh, that looks like it's going to be a really cool, that's going to be a really cool outfit. Yeah, uh, yeah WandaVision, like, or Wanda's costume throughout the MCU, it's kind of, I actually like the Age of Ultra. I like the goth look. I was like, oh, that actually, that actually looks really it's cool. It's like um, Wanda <laughs> in uh, X-Men Evolution. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. was, yeah. it, 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 it was fun. And, and super lucky that they had that red coat uh, at the end of Age of Ultra when <laughs> yeah. the PHO just threw to her. Like, I don't know That's who true. that was actually, who that was supposed to be for. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I can't really say anything better than Mike and Emma already have. I mean, the okay. two things that really stuck out to me, I love the fact that we haven't seen her do the, uh, the mind trick uh, since Age of Ultron. Because yeah. to me, it's like, when you're under the tutelage of Steve Rogers, that kind of move is not good with him. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, no. Like, if we're going to fight, we're going to fight fair. Right. You're not going to mess around with people's heads. Um, but also, the uh, the when we see the reveal of the runes and the thanks for the lesson, I, I, I kind of got like Sansa Stark vibes. Like, like she's, oh, she's, pay, she's paying attention. Okay. She's, pay, she's paying attention. And she's like, listen, yeah. I'm going to learn. And everything yeah. that Agatha showed her, she picked up and she did it better. Yeah. 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 Again, twist on that relationship. Also, one more thing to, t to point out on my end. I love the fact that she stopped Vision from helping. Yeah. And, and I, I, I know I'm a dude pointing this out and I'm sure a woman point this out better than I can, but it's clearly, I got this. I don't need a man's help to handle my business. Like it was, it was, back. I think it was a bit of that and a bit of a, no, this is my fight. You yeah, know what I mean? Yep, it was, it's too. more of a, this is my fight than like, a, I yeah. don't need a man's help. It's like, a, I, well, you don't, you don't need to be involved in yeah. this. This has, this doesn't concern you. Yeah. This is my fight. Um, and again, it's like this is my journey. Yeah, it's yeah, my yeah. journey. Yeah. And and that mm. is one of the things that is so great about this show is that like it has allowed Wanda as a character to have so much agency. Yeah. Well, I would even go one step further a little bit. And I, I think it's beyond it's my fight. I think we're so used to seeing male heroes be like, sorry, I need to protect you that when we see a woman who is that powerful, mm -hmm. like she's protecting him. Mm -hmm. Like vi Vision is not powerful enough to deal with this. This is powerful people up here. Like yeah. she's like, she's like, babe, I love you. You need to stay down there. This is the big yeah. people powers. Like this is the, this is the big time. Yeah. Like you it can't handle this right now. It called back a little bit of civil war. Remember when Vision tried to control her and that with Hawkeye and all of that? Yeah. And she sent his ass through the levels and said, I'm <laughs> handling things here, pal. So I love that. You're right. It's yeah. a nice little callback. So, all right, let's move on here. Agatha falls to the streets. We have this interaction between Agatha and Wanda. Agatha says, You're cruel. Just know you're stuck in this town for the rest of your life. And it says, I'm going to turn you into the nosy neighbor. Uh, before she does, Agatha says, You have no idea what you've unleashed. You're going to need me. And Wanda, without missing a beat, says, If she does, she'll know where to find her. Uh, and then turns her into the nosy neighbor and says, I'll be seeing you. And she says, Not if I see you first. It's a great little moment. Kids run up. The family is reunited. Vision says he knows she'll set everything right, just not for them, which is a great, great mature moment when Wanda doesn't feel the, the pain of that as the predominant emotion, feels the logic and says quickly, yes. Uh, and Wanda gives a smile to Monica, kind of hero to hero. Wanda reduces the energy field uh, back at the house. So it's slowly reducing that we're back at the house. They have a beautiful moment with their boys as they're putting them to bed, in essence, knowing that they're going to disappear now when the energy field disappears. But it's great. They were so proud of them. It's beautiful. And then as they're leaving, uh, Wanda turns around and says, thank you, boys, for, for, cho letting, for choosing, choosing uh, me. me as your mom. Yeah, it was just so, so beautiful. Uh, and then uh, she turns off the light. So, uh, yeah, and before we get to the big scene, let's just deal with that, all of that, the Agatha and Wanda situation saying, you know, uh, she'll be so clearly we haven't seen the last of Agatha. And someone made a really interesting point on, I think, Dean of Den of Geek or Screen Rant talking about how I'll be seeing it was a bit of a reference to an old 50s or 60s show called The Prisoner, which is when yeah. she, she turned her into that decade when The Prisoner was a big hit. And had the back and forth. There's some very interesting stuff going on here. But uh, so we're not done with Wanda, are we there, Mike? You mean Agnes? Agnes. No, I'm sorry, yeah, Agnes. Agnes. Yeah, we're not done with Agnes. <laughs> no, and I think that was great. I mean, look, we all clearly love Agatha 
or Agnes yeah. so much. And I think the fact that they have put her on the bench in a we can bring you back when we want to way is super smart on their part. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was great. Like Wanda is not like, at least for now, for this moment, and we'll see where she goes, Wanda has decided to be the hero. She's going mm-hmm. to do the right thing. Yeah. So even when it comes to Agatha, she's going to do the right thing. And for everything that Agatha has done, like, this is a fitting core sort of punishment for her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you, you came into my life as the nosy neighbor, and that's how you tried to fuck with me. Yeah. So yep. the way that I'm gonna fuck back with you is I'm gonna actually make you the nosy neighbor. Uh, and I've seen a lot of that, like actually a friend of mine was texting me today about like magic questions. Um, so just to be really clear, like even though Wanda brings down the runes and the mm-hmm. hex, yes. as soon as she casts the spell on Agatha, the spell is cast. It's not yeah. like once the hex are down, the spell goes away. So it, the, the, the Wanda's hex and the cast of the spell on Agatha don't really, like, they're not tied to each other. So, like, mm-hmm. Agatha has all the powers that she has, but she can't access them because she doesn't know she has them. She believes right. that she's just a nosy neighbor. So I could definitely see a, ser- a situation mm-hmm. where we get to Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness and they need some extra magical firepower and Wanda would be like, oh, I know where to go, cut yeah. to Westview, and Agnes is like watering her roses or something. So I think yeah, we, yeah. We, will definitely, we will definitely see her again. Um, as far as like saying goodbye to the kids and like the maturity, like this is the payoff emotionally of the show. Yeah. Wanda, mm-hmm. Wanda's grief at the beginning of WandaVision was, I can't let this go. Yeah. Wanda's right. grief at the end of this is, I'm going to be sad, but I have to let this go. Yep. And yeah. watching watching Wanda and Vision put their kids to bed and say goodbye to them and, and, and tell them how much they love them and say, families are forever no matter what happens. Yeah. Thanks for letting me be your mom. Like, it... Yeah, this, uh, that was when it, I it was... Like, it, like, I'm going to cry crying. even talking about it. Like, it ugly was... Crying. The way that they have made us care about this family, the way that they've like built this up in a way like watching them say goodbye and even like from a directing standpoint to like have Tommy and Billy sleeping there and then to look out the window between them and just see the hex sort of shrinking and coming towards the house and just knowing that it's about to hit and these kids are about to disappear like fuck like this is where i'm like this is where i'm like guys i don't care about mephisto yep (laughs) i don't care i don't like i don't care about mephisto the mailman pietro the multiverse the mutants like i don't give a fuck all i care about is tommy and billy and i'm very upset right now and please be respectful of me in my time of grief like that's where i was at right now the witness protection program i don't care about any of it yeah i don't care (laughs) But yeah, uh, Shannon, also we saw this because I know you got the tinfoil hat on as the energy field is going across. We see something I pointed out last week, which is the marquee turned back to say Tannhauser Gate again from uh, Blade Runner. And it is a reference to the famous Tears in the Rain monologue at the end, which is from a synthetic man accepting Uh his death in the final (laughs) moments, right? That's uh, Roy Batty. So there's these references rolling out around throughout what did you think of this whole moment here uh, as wanda was saying goodbye to the kids and vision as well well i mean first when when she knocked agnes back down yeah. to earth i like that agnes lost her amazing or agatha lost her amazing smoky eye that she had been <laughs> yeah. rocking the entire fight scene <laughs> um <laughs> you know there you know there's a lot of comparisons but be- between wanda and marvel and raven in dc and i love oh, yeah. what she did to yeah. agatha because it's essentially what raven it does to Trigon sometimes got him in that yeah. that little gym there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought it's mercy, but at the same time, that is a dark. That's a dark punishment. She like, is. It's dark. She, she says you're. You know, she's what she says to you're cruel. To Wanda, you're cruel. Yeah. So you can tell Wanda still has that streak, and that should scare everybody. But yeah, yeah. Good, and yeah. just yeah, the moment at the end, like I. In my head, it's just like, I don't know how, like, this would not have worked scripting wise, but it's kind of like, oh, God, I hate that she's closing the door knowing that they're about to be Mm -hmm. unhexed, essentially. Like, 
I, like you need that moment with just Wanda and Vision, but at the yeah. same time, I'm like, oh, that broke my heart that yeah. you left your <laughs> you left your kids up there. Um, yeah, I mean, this this is you know as we've talked throughout throughout these uh, reviews, you know, dealing with dealing with loss, it, it's it's a tough thing, and uh, watching yeah. watching uh, these you know fantastic characters and having such a vis visceral reaction uh, yeah. to their to their emotions. I mean, th there's there's a lot of emotional purging that may have happened in the last mm. 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. What, uh, my, Emma, would you talk to me? What do you feel about this whole moment? So I think that moment between Agatha and Wanda is so important where Agatha accuses her of being cruel because mm. again, it plays into what is so great about Wanda as a character is that she is straddling that line and right. i think that one of the reasons that she is able to let go of her family and to make that sacrifice is because she does get to have that final moment of triumph over yeah. agatha yeah yeah and casting her in the role that yeah. she chose to play right to get uh, in it's, with uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, Wanda. Yeah, to get in point. with Wanda. Yep, yeah. exactly yeah. right. And it's definitely a little fucked up, uh, <laughs> but that's what's great about it. That's what's great about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, oh my God, those kids, uh, yeah. the scene where they were putting them to bed, I was just an absolute wreck because I knew in my heart that Wanda was making the right decision yeah yeah which was to let go of the hex entirely and thus letting go of her family mm -hmm. and this happiness that she had created for herself because again ultimately her power is no good as far as you know protecting the people she cares about she's yeah. unfortunately better off on her own yeah and for now yeah. For now, for now, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I like Devontae Smith. She says, the thought of Agnes being stuck in that state and Ralph having a sex dungeon makes this even worse. <laughs> so, fair. Fair point there, Devontae. Fair point. <laughs> wow. <Wow-ha>. Guys. <laughs> guys, that is... That is a dysfunctional suburban relationship right there. That's what that is. Yep, I love I love our fans. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, let's uh, we'll move on to the next scene here. By the way, we've got almost 1100 of you watching us live still. Thank you so much. Please remember to hit that thumbs up button, that like button. It's important. See if we can get to a thousand likes by the end of the show. That would be incredible and break an outlaw nation record so please yeah do us a favor and hit Dang. that like button as we go along would be incredible all right uh she turns off the light the energy field reduces turning the town back to normal and then we get this incredibly beautiful scene between wanda and vision vision wants to know what you know vision says like i want to see you know it's bad to say goodbye in the dark and she, he said he read that somewhere she's like you didn't he's like you're right i just wanted to see you uh as you really are as brightly and clearly as possible i'm gonna tell you something uh, Vision got some moves, man. Vision's a badass player, man. Him touching yeah. that stomach, oh wearing God. a sweater. That's <laughs> a move, Emma. That's the a move. The whole internet you know. is thirsty for Vision in a turtleneck. <laughs> I know. Quite he, honestly. He had the moves in that moment. That, and then, that ship of Theseus paradox and then the fucking turtleneck. Oh, yes. It's a, it's a uh, and then, Dream and, man. And then, yeah. and then we get to them coming closer and, and you know, they're say, they kind of start saying goodbye to each other and Vision says, I just want to know what i am you know because and this is why it was so funny because we had vision versus vision in the library doing about who's the real or talking about who's the real vision or debating it and then what happens there and white vision goes off and here we have westview vision who was created by wanda and asks the creator kind of like roy batty trying to find the his creator in blade runner asks his creator what he is and she says he is vision, the piece of the mind stone that lives in her. You are a body of wire and blood and bone that Wanda created. He tells her, you are my sadness and my hope, but mostly you're my love. And it's such a beautiful moment. And he cries. He sheds a little <gasps> tear. And I saw this, didn't even think about this. It references Avengers number 58, where various members of Avengers give Vision a rousing endorsement, citing his heroism and humanity before inducting him into the team. Vision excuses himself and then sheds a single tear uh, in private as further proof of his humanity. They share a beautiful kiss. He says he is a memory made real. 
Who knows what he may be next? Kind of laying the groundwork that he mm-hmm. might show up in some other thing. We have said goodbye f- before, so it stands to reason. And she finishes the sentence. We will say hello. Say hello again. Again, and the vision slowly fades in the same room he was born in for the series. And I don't mind telling you, <sighs> and I'm doing it now. I cried my face off. That was. <laughs> So, so beautiful. I was, I was already right? like ugly sobbing yeah. from the kid scene. Like this just, I yeah, was. I, I, I handled the kid scene, but Emma, that moment, like nah, imagine having to say goodbye. Sobbing. Right? Having to say goodbye to the person you just brought back to life. If I had to, if I could bring my father back to life, have a day and then have to say goodbye to him at the end, kind of like, uh, well, I don't want to ruin a certain film, but let me know. But like, if I had that yeah. moment, I, it would absolutely decimate me, and they played it so beautifully here, Emma. Yeah, unbelievably beautifully. Uh, it just, it was so well done, and it just, you knew that they needed to have that moment between yeah. Wanda and Vision, because again, the name of the show was WandaVision, and ultimately it was about the two of them, and it, you know, yeah. the fact that she confronted that it was the fact that she had brought him back, it was the piece of the mind stone that lives within her that was able to like recreate this version of vision with whom she could live this happy life on this plot of land that he had purchased for them to grow old in something that he will never do because he is a synthesoid. He is not really ever going to age. He is not entirely human, but then just seeing the humanity within him when he does shed that single tear was just so so powerful um and and her saying that you know yeah you are you're this thing but more importantly than that you are my you are my sadness you're my pain but most Mm. importantly you are my love um and it's the fact that like her love is what was able to manifest Mm -hmm. this version of vision uh it i it just that's what the whole show was about <laughs> right and in, in, in that <laughs> moment right um right when it touches back uh, shannon to what happened in the last episode we're going through the memories of wanda that great line that everyone's talking about what is uh, a grief but love persevering that's him kind of teaching her a little bit of a lesson or maybe showing her the path out of this pain and here is wanda kind of not returning the favor necessarily but these emotional beats connect uh, in uh, in these moments as they're asking, who am I? Trying to figure out what uh, what he will be next. Yeah, yeah. The the line that she had, the you know, it 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 stands that we'll say hello again. Mm-hmm. Like, good lord, like that just that just absolutely that whole moment just just gutted me. And the thing that I feel like a lot of people who who come to these movies, who come to who come to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, the relationship in the films between Wanda and Vision, sometimes you just don't got time. Like there's yeah. just yeah. not enough time to really understand how wonderful and rich these characters are. Because I know, especially like post Age of Ultron, um, where they were kind of uh, uh, in focus, uh, yes. that the the idea that this that this woman loves this robot is just so that's a difficult idea <laughs> it can be yeah. weird for people to process. <laughs> yeah. especially with that with the color scheme like it's like yeah. that this this is very out there um what's so great about the show is the people who came to the mcu through the movies and not through the comics now see yeah what yeah. what everyone loved who 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 did come from the comics who yeah. you're able to get a little bit of this relationship that that has that has touch folks who've read the books for for years yeah absolutely mikey uh yeah echoing what shannon said i i always love when i have friends who aren't comic book people who kind of are like why do i care about this and then you just see them bawling like i I, that's always such a satisfying thing for me um this was great we've all debated and discussed like what is vision is Mm. this the dead body going around is this the minds like what what is this really and to kind of break it down at the end of the day to be like, it's love yeah, is kind of so lovely, literally. And it really got me to thinking about so much of what I love about the MCU um, is love. Like mm-hmm. Steve Rogers' entire story hinges around this sacrifice that he makes where he's going to miss yeah. his last dance with Peggy. Uh, and, and, and when you really get into the Infinity Stones themselves, like the Soul Stone 
is built around sacrifice. The soul stone is about you have to sacrifice the thing that you care about the most. So we see Thanos sacrifice Gamora. We see Hawkeye sacrifice Black Widow. Uh, and now we have this moment where this whole debate about the Mind Stone is broken down to just like, it's, it's love. And like, you know, you come to a Marvel show for the spectacle, you come to a Marvel show for how is it connected to everything else. You don't often come to Marvel shows for the poetry. But yeah. everything about this final scene, like you, you quoted a little bit, Johnny, but like when he, when he says to her, I've been a voice with no body, a body, but not human. And now a memory made real, who knows what I might be next. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Like I, I couldn't even, <laughs> Yeah. like yeah. it was it, it, like two weeks in a row now, like last week when they were like, what is grief if not love persevering? I was like, are you kidding me with this? And then to hit us with that this week, it's like, and this is what I mean. Like there's things that didn't work perfectly. They didn't land sure. the Monica thing a hundred percent, but to make us care this much about this family, and mm -hmm. to hinge an entire show on this relationship. Yeah. And then to, and then also just the fact that like with Wanda and Vision in Infinity War, Infinity War is built around Wanda and Vision making this huge sacrifice to save the universe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it sucks and it's awful and it's sad, but they saved the universe. Yeah. And then, Thanos, and then Thanos comes in two seconds later and just reverses it. Yeah. And then just kills Vision in the most brutal way possible. So everything that they did in that moment, that emotional moment, means zero. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she doesn't get to say goodbye. Like, yeah. and so then to actually give them this proper goodbye, to actually have them be able to be in a room and have this moment, like, it was worth all of it. Like, this was what the yeah. nine episodes built up to, and this is why yeah. it was worth it. Yeah, and she's seen him die three times now. Oh, I know. Man, that was a lot to take. But yeah, she, this is the one where she actually got to say goodbye, Michael. That's a great, great point. All right, Wanda is back uh, in the empty plot of the house they had chosen. Uh, and I thought they were going to pull a Dallas moment and say it was all a dream. But no, this was real because <laughs> Wanda throws her hoodie over and then Wanda walks amongst the town members who are all rightfully, I would say, angry at her and hate her for what she has done to them now that they've broken or she's broken them free from her hex. Uh, she sees uh, 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 Monica. Wanda w walks up to her. Monica says, they'll never know what you sacrificed for them. I'm going to have to have, I have a little bit of issues with that line, but Wanda says, you don't hate me. Monica says, given the chance and given your power, I would bring my mom back. And uh, Wanda says she is sorry for all the pain she caused. Monica says, I know I don't understand this power, but I will. And then as, uh, she takes off as soon as she hears the sirens. Monica wishes her good luck. She flies up past Westview, turns around, sees the sun setting, and then rolls on out of here. And it's the end of the show. Shannon, what did this mean? They'll never know what you sacrificed for them because they wouldn't even be in this position if she hadn't put them in this position. So what is the meaning of this line? I, I had trouble when I'm struggling with it, so I want to hear what you all think. Okay. I thought it was a bit of an excuse because she never goes to them and goes one by one, I'm sorry, one by one, I'm sorry. She says it to Monica and then rolls on out of there. So I just had some problems with that after such a beautiful scene. I, I understand the issue, but also I think this is this is Wanda connecting with Monica, or rather right, Monica right. connecting with Wanda. Certainly. Um, because it doesn't matter how much Wanda apologizes apologizes in that moment. These people are, as you said, justifiably really pissed off. Yeah. And yeah. as as one who has suffered a, an extreme loss, Monica's like, look, I get it. And if I could do the same thing, I would. I mean, it, it, I, 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 get, I get the issue with the line because it does seem like a little bit of a cop-out that she just kind of takes off. Mm -hmm. um, I was having a, a conversation with some folks today and they were like, well, that just wasn't, that wasn't a heroic thing to do. And I was like, but that's kind of what makes these characters interesting is, you know, nobody bats a thousand. Yeah. Like she can't be, she can't be perfect. And also like, well, why didn't they get her? I'm like, what are you going to do to her? Yeah, you can't. You, you can't. You can't do anything. I think. I think those people, they can be angry, but right. they were probably smart. Like, hey, maybe let's not attack the lady who had us under or under this uh, mind control right. for weeks. I mean, yeah, the whole. It, it was the connection. It was that. It was that shared grief 
-hmm. And that was Monica's motivation the entire time to get back into the hex was, yep. I know what she's going through. I can get through to her. And she was right. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, mm -hmm. they kind of, did they kind of excuse her actions though, by having her connect with Monica at this level? Someone mentioned maybe it was a time crunch. They couldn't have other scenes with these people, but I just wanted to see, cause everyone screamed about the Sokovia Accords, the Sokovia Accords. Hey, what's breaking the Sokovia Accords? I'm sure it's in the Sokovia Accords that you can't mind control people against their will for a while. So it just, I, for I sure. felt like there should have been something more here, something deeper here. I, I, I think it's that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. No, uh, I, look, I do think it was a time crunch issue. I do think mm -hmm. that I don't think they have time for her to apologize to everybody. And I think to Shannon's point, I don't think it would matter. Like those people yeah. hate her and they yeah. justifiably hate her. Those oh, people should hate her until they're dead. Um, I do think, <laughs> I do think the issue. And I also think that given the arc that they did with Monica and given mm -hmm. the fact that Monica, what happened with Monica and her mom makes her really understand. I think Monica saying, Honestly, if I had your powers, I would bring my mom back. Like, I get it. I think that all makes sense. I think oh, the sure. fix here, I think the thing that would have made everybody okay, I think the thing that would have, would have made you okay, mm -hmm. and to Shannon's point, it actually addresses what Shannon was saying, would be Monica saying as the sword agents pull up, like, I get it. If I had your powers, I would bring my mom back too. Mm -hmm. You got to come in and answer for what you did. Like, yeah. I think, I think, I think had there just been a admission that I understand it, I mm -hmm. get it, I feel you, you did this to 4,000 people, you've got to, you got to kind of come in and answer for it. And then you could have had the exact same ending because to Shannon's point, nobody's stopping her. She's yeah. literally that powerful. Like she could have been like, yeah, yeah sorry, no thanks. I'm going to go figure out this book and flies off and you would have had the same ending. Mm -hmm. So I think you could have had the same thing um, that you ended up with. But I think that ultimately the thing that seems to be bumping people that I think is justified mm -hmm. is the fact that we can empathize with Wanda, we can love Wanda, we can care about Wanda, but we also can admit that given what Wanda did, she probably should answer for her actions. Yeah. And given the scene with her and Monica, it was sort of a, hey, you're cool, don't worry about that thing you did. And I think yeah. that's what's kind of sitting wrong with people. Yep, a tone, a tone in some way, not, hey, it's cool, hope you figure out your powers, peace. So I, I don't know, what what do you think, Emma, about this uh, scene? I, I, I think that I echo the sentiments about there being a, a time crunch in terms of like mm. how long can this episode be? And I think that unfortunately, Monica suffered a little bit for it, um, just just in terms of her screen time. Again, it's like, right. I don't feel like she was wasted. I just feel like she was a little underutilized in this episode. What I will say is that I did not feel like that line was meant to excuse Wanda mm -hmm. so much as it was just Monica saying exactly what I have been saying in terms of the character of Wanda and why I never felt like this was a story of a woman who, you know, couldn't handle her emotions and went crazy. Right, right. To me, it was a woman who unwittingly caused this situation mm. because she is somebody who was literally powerful enough in a moment of grief like yeah. very real and serious grief to create a fictional world in which she longed to escape yeah. and i so to me monica's lying to her was like a hey i understand why you did what you did to, i didn't feel like monica was excusing her okay. so much as she was saying i get it mm -hmm. okay all right um, all right, all right, that's fair. I mean, I, I have my feelings about it, and I hear you. I just, I just would want to see more, and but sure. maybe we'll get it down the road. And yeah, she goes on the run as we're about to see, so we'll see what that leads to. Uh, so the show ends, but we've got some post credits and mid credit scenes here to discuss. The mid credit scenes comes in. Jimmy Woo is handling things in the town. Monica walk, Monica walks in, and and her and Jimmy have a fun exchange about, hey, power looks good on you, Jimmy, which is really <laughs> nice. You know, Jimmy has had his own arc, right, from the bumbling guy with the Ant Man to now, and the, <laughs> and the solo FBI guy who isn't even pick, uh, who's only important when they have softball. All of a sudden, now he's in charge of these <laughs> this recovery effort, this humanitarian effort there in the town, setting up 
a pharmacy, medical tent, all that kind of stuff. Darcy has taken off after her one-liner, uh, and uh, Hayward is arrested. Uh, an FBI agent who we have not seen before walks up and says they're asking for Monica in the theater. She walks in, and the FBI agent reveals herself to be a scroll and says, I was sent by an old friend of your mother's, obviously referring to Maria. We, he heard you'd been grounded. He'd like to meet with you. She asks where. She points up. Clearly Samuel Jackson. Nick Fury up there in the sword base uh, uh, above the earth. Mikey, uh, did you like this as an as a end credit scene? What was your feeling here? Or I did. I liked it a lot. Uh, first of all, I love seeing Jimmy Woo get his due. I think Jimmy Woo's <laughs> going to run sword. Like I'm like I'm all about Jimmy Woo. And so seeing like, like when you have an end credit scene where someone says, hey, uh, authority looks good on you. You're like, okay, well, that's clearly a nod that we're going to see a yeah, lot more of you. Yeah. Uh, and I think rightly so. Um, yeah, wasn't really sure where they were going with the whole, uh, they want to see you in the theater. You went in. When she turned, I, I love anyone turning into a scroll. I think that <laughs> one of my favorite things about Captain Marvel, which I think is problematic in a lot of ways and not the best of the Marvel movies, uh, I think like turning the scrolls into sort of refugees and good guys versus what yeah. we've seen of them in the comics was really fun. And so anytime we see the scrolls pop up, whether it's in the end of uh, Far From Home or here, mm. I always get really excited about it. We know Nick Fury is up there on this base. Uh, we all assumed that that base was a sword base, given what sword is in the comics. It now seems right. that that is maybe not exactly what it is, but yeah. it does seem like what Nick Fury is doing up there with the scrolls. Uh, which Monica Rambeau will be a part of, is definitely central to Captain Marvel 2. Mm -hmm. I also thought it was good, Johnny, you mentioned with the vision sort of philosoph philosophical debate earlier, the fact that the marquee on the theater said Tannhauser Gate. Um, but it is interesting that Tannhauser Gate in the Blade Runner sort of speech that they give is yeah. almost is sort of, sort of gateway in space. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And the fact that they're like, hey somebody wants to talk to you in the theater, the theater has the marquee that says Tannhauser Gate, uh, and they are then having a discussion about going up to this space station, uh, 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 I thought was a kind of cool sort of reference as yeah. well. So I thought this was That's all neat. awesome. Makes yeah. me super excited, both for Captain Marvel 2 and for Secret Invasion, which we know is coming down the line on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, and this is interesting, Emma, because uh, this has taken place six months or so before the end of Spider-Man Far From Home. So clearly... Maybe Nick Fury is just setting up the base, or uh, when we get to Spider Man Far From Home, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, here setting up the base, and then when we get to Spider Man Far From Home, that base has been up for a while. Monica would most likely be yeah. up there then, yeah, according to there. the continuity of this. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm totally, I got really excited when it <laughs> turned into a scroll. I really oh, did. Yeah. Because, as you know, as Vogel was saying, like, the, I, the idea that they presented, which I thought was one of the best things about the Captain Marvel film of the Skrulls being, again, these these misunderstood refugees yeah. was such a strong choice. Uh, yeah. And also then, and so informative also to the character of Monica, who would have been, who was, we know, exposed to the concept of the Skrulls being misunderstood from the time she was a little girl, so. Yeah, good point. Shannon, any thoughts on this uh, uh, mid credit scene? Well, when they got into the theater and the uh, the sword agent said, you know, or FBI agent said, you know, I'm, a friend of your mother sent me. And I'm kind of like, oh, we ain't got time for Captain Marvel to show up. Like, they're not gonna, they don't have time to hash this out. <laughs> so when she turned into a scroll, I was like, oh, awesome. And then the whole when she gave the little the little yeah. point up. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's exciting. I mean, this is that's exactly what you want from a post credit sequence, like a like a fun reveal and yeah. a forecast of what's yeah. to come. And the, the brilliant thing that they have done and, and you can you can think about this with Agatha as well, is that the MCU is taking what is in the comics and they're using it for their own purposes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. You know, the fact that in, yeah. the, in the books, Agatha not you know, she 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 walks both sides of the line, but she's more a good guy. Yeah. Um, and the scrolls in the books traditionally have been villains. So the yeah. fact that they're able mm -hmm. to keep the people who one make entertaining make entertaining uh, uh, film films and, and, and television shows, but also keep the fans guessing as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brian Leonard saying, uh, I think when she pointed up, uh, she just meant the projector room to change the reels on the movie. That's not over. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's your friend, Michael. Uh, Brian. Right. <laughs> Brian. 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 Uh, 
Uh, all right, let's go to the post credit scene here at the end of uh, the episode. Uh, we have uh, her uh, there, uh, you know, kind of in this cabin. And I made a joke that it seems like the cabin is looks like the Hulk's cabin, but it is not. Uh, and she is there having some tea sitting out there. It's pretty awesome. And then we've the camera pans through the cabin and into the bedroom, and we see. Scarlet Witch, a la Stephen Strange, reading the Darkhold book, getting more and more information, and then we start to hear the faint sounds of her children screaming, help us, help us. We scan to her eyes, they turn red, and then we go to black. So this is fascinating. I've seen uh, the screen rant speculating that this might be Mount Wandacor, which is the place where Marvel Comics canon indicates that Wanda and Pietro were born, and it looms large in the Scarlet Witch's history. There's definitely some dark magic going on here. And some people have even made the reference that he's she's in a cabin, just like Evil Dead. Sam Raimi directed Evil Dead, <laughs> Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> I love these all these connections. Uh, but also, uh, the Darkhold was fashioned by the Elder God, Cthon, who used Wanda as a pawn to invade the Earth. So maybe this is some foreshadowing for what we're going to see in Multiverse of Madness. Um, uh, uh, what did you think of this, Shannon? Oh, fantastic. I mean, again, another great just post credit sequence. Yeah. And the, yes. the fun thing is, you know, when Agatha had said that the Scarlet Witch's powers are going to exceed even the Sorcerer Supreme himself, yeah. like anytime in Doctor Strange, when his astral form came out, like he was out, like he, mm -hmm. he was asleep or he'd been he lost consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that she was able to make herself a cup of tea as she's reading yeah. up on what she needs to know Ooh. about the Darkhold. I mean, I know we had talked about this a long time, months and months and months yeah, ago. Yeah. But it seems like the idea that she could end the world by ripping up the multiverse yeah. seems very possible now to, to get her kids back. Absolutely. Uh, Emma, yeah. what'd you think of this whole scene here? I, what, are we, I, what are we setting up here? Well, I mean, I, we're definitely, to me, watching it, I was like, oh, this is a very strong Doctor Strange connection because mm -hmm. we saw, obviously, in the Doctor Strange film, a lot of him, like, astral projecting yeah. his soul to keep working, but as Shannon pointed out, while he was sleeping, Wanda, on the other hand, seems to be able to just be able to keep living two lives yeah. and, you know, be Wanda and also like project her Scarlet Witch persona to learn everything that she needs to know. And it does seem very possible to me that like what, what she is looking for here in her isolation is a way to maybe get back some of the things that she lost. Yeah, and maybe uh, two of those things, Mike, are her children. Uh, and we know yeah. in the comics, she does bring Wiccan and Speed back to life, or some way they come back to life and they become active part of a young Avengers, which a lot of people speculate about. What do you think about this? Yeah, I thought it was great. I uh, It was really funny, like, before we even got to the astral projecting part, we zoom in on this lovely cabin, like the best Airbnb ever, and she's <laughs> sitting there like, and, and it actually, was a it was little really evil dead cabin, though. If I'm yeah, being honest, it was a little. It was a little. Exact thought was I was like, this is a little Evil Dead for me. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't there, isn't there a crazy demon book in Evil Dead too? So yeah, sure it kind of tracks. The <laughs> I actually, <laughs> I actually had this really nice sort of cathartic moment <laughs> where, like, first of all, she's sitting there having her tea, and I'm like, oh wow, like she's still sad, but she's actually worked through her, gr like she is working through her grief. Like yeah. she's not in denial on it, she's accepting, she's like, she looks very sort of at peace, and she's not wearing red for, like there were other moments where she wasn't wearing red, but she's traditionally mostly in red, and she was yeah. all in gray. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. This is like a nice chill moment. And then like we pull in and I'm like, nope, 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 nope. It's not. She's astral projecting and she's reading that dark hold and there's a bunch of shit going on. And then like, I literally laughed because, uh, so she's going through the dark hold. I'm like, cool. She's, she's out stranging Dr. Strange. And then we hear the kids and I'm like, she's going to find the kids. I'm like, where are those kids? And I literally thought in my head and I was like, Mephisto. And I'm like, just stop it. You, why are you keep, why do you keep saying Mephisto? <laughs> like, like at this point, I just look around my room. I look around my room and I'm like, like what? Like I'm like, oh, look here, it, it's Mephisto. Oh, hey, it's Mephisto. This is Mephisto. Like it could be like whatever. Like it doesn't even matter at this point. But uh, so like part of me was like, oh, is this going to be where they go? Uh, I feel like we've all been Mephistoed 
Uh, and I don't know if we'll ever see him, but I am excited for the kids. Like we know that we know that the kids are going to come back. Like it's yeah. very clear yeah, that Marvel yeah. is going down this Young Avengers road. Um, but I think it's pretty cool the way they've done it. Like they now have us caring about. Like in addition to yeah. nerds just wanting to see the Young Avengers, yeah. they now have us emotionally invested in Wanda getting these kids back because we actually mm-hmm. like these kids. Like we're like, oh no, they were great. You can't. You've got to get them back. So the fact that they've got us on board on this journey, which will be interesting because if Wanda has to do things, I mean, this is what I was saying before about that choice with that Agatha presented, which Mm -hmm. is you can be the hero and let everybody in Westview out, but you have to give up your family. And Wanda in that moment chose to be the hero. But I feel like Wanda is going to be faced with moments again and again and again, where you can either get what you want or you can do the right thing. And the fact that they sort of have us on board with like, well, look, I want those kids back too. So I'm kind of on your side, but what do we have to sacrifice is gonna be really interesting to see in Doctor Strange 2 and beyond. (sighs) Yep. Homo erectus says, Mephist, no. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But but I will throw this out there, and I think this is going to be hard work that we have to do as viewers and people who analyze this kind of stuff as well. She is not Captain America. She is not any of the regular superheroes you've seen. Her power transcends even the Sorcerer Supreme. Already higher than Doctor Strange. Yep. Who's not even the Sorcerer Supreme yet right now. Uh, yep. So the, her power is that extensive. So we are going to have to adjust our perceptions of what she can do and can't do and what she's responsible for or not responsible for because she's still on her journey as she said at the end here of figuring out what her powers can do so her reading the book is getting the knowledge you can read all the books you want it's when you put it in practice and go into whatever situation you're going into that you'll start to understand and see the consequences and the benefits of the knowledge you so we're going to see what this all leads to everyone's already speculating oh she's gonna get tricked again again i'd i'd hate it if they did that again it no. would i would like her to be more uh, exploring this and confronting this and going on her journey as she grows as a character throughout so we shall see um all right that's our spoiler review of the episode Woo. we've got a bunch of stream labs and super chats you guys have been so incredibly kind to send them in. <laughs> We're going to go through them. So if you want to send in your questions now, let's do so. Do you guys have a hard out? Can we roll through these? Are we good? Let's do it. Let's Emma, do it. Are you, are you yeah, good? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. we're good. Let's do it one by one here. Frankie Gouge says, my father passed in late January. WandaVision has helped me through this grief. One bright spot have, have been these Geek Buddies reviews that have helped me through the dark time. Ah, oh, Frankie, thank you. Aw. That's so kind. Thank you. Yeah, very, very kind of you. Thank you, Frankie. Uh, Jamal Bayless says, how does the Darkhold tie the MCU to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Ghost Rider, et cetera? I would love uh, Disney Plus to advertise Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to get people to see the possibilities the Darkhold offers. Hashtag Roka, uh, not a bad guy. <laughs> Thanks, Jamal. I don't know what that means. Oh, not a bad guy. I got it. Not a bad guy. <laughs> not a bad guy. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, does anyone want to speculate on that? How do you think the dark hold will connect? I, 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 I can't answer this one. Do I, I don't. I don't think it will. I think they're doing their own. Yeah, thing. that's what I was gonna say. Is I, <laughs> I unfortunately, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that it will. I, I remember watching jessica jones and they had made an, a reference to the fact mm. that the avengers had destroyed a good chunk of new york city during the whole tesseract right. situation with loki and hulk smashing um but uh yeah i don't know marvel television is kind of living in its own world i think uh yeah. and again we we definitely see the book completely redesigned here with the dark hold as you say pam for props mm. she really really killed it um <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I, I think that just knowing the very, very little that I know about the behind the scenes of Marvel uh, features and Marvel cinematic, uh, that Marvel television, and everything else, like I do think that where they were living before, where you had the Marvel Cinematic Universe over here and you had like the Netflix shows and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Runaways and Inhumans over here, yeah. I, I think that what was happening over here was not necessarily what the creative mind meld over here wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that what, 
And I think that what we have now is a complete like this is all to, this is all together. So I, I, I think that a lot of what we know about the dark hold and in humans and everything from Agent of Shield, it's not to take away from it. It was a great show. Like no, it was no. all really yeah. good. But I but I have a feeling that we won't hear that referenced a ton in the MCU going okay. forward. Okay. Uh, Sam Candelaria Jr. says, I'm hoping Peters, Evan Peters, is the one in the witness protection program. His real name is Simon Williams, or if he, or I'd love him to be Fox's Quicksilver. That Quicksilver would have totally picked that name Ralph Boner. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, that's not a bad I mean, that's true. I mean, yeah. he was very amused at his own last name. Very like, amused. it wasn't his last name. So. <laughs> that's true. And apparently, if you go through, if you pause the show, or pause the show, Right when they're showing his walls, there are apparently a number of X Men references throughout. So that's kind of interesting. I have not done that yet. I only have so much tinfoil to go around. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Carl says, uh, of note, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, in the one episode where Ralph and Agatha are separated, she does not mention him. The Halloween. Oh, the special. Halloween episode where she's driving. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. She does not mention him when she's on the edge of town. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, she's, she was also kind of. She play was act, setting vision acting. up for yeah. uh, for something. Yeah. So as far as the witness protection thing goes, I want to shout out uh, Hector Navarro. So oh, yeah. so he basically pointed out that Asif Ali um, played Absala Tandon or Norm on WandaVision, right. also played a character named Jesse Fletcher in the last episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season one. Oh. So he may, that, that might be stunt casting as far as like the witness protection program thing goes. All right. Um, All right. All right. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. All right, uh, Jack Andre says, I think one of the reasons they chose Evan Peters is because in the end, they knew we wanted to believe, just like Wanda, if they had cast anyone else, we wouldn't have had that moment. That's a great point. Yeah, that's a good point. Really that's, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, but I will, well, I'll push back on that a little bit for one reason. Mm -hmm. I think that, yes, I think that is true. I think that getting Wanda to believe it and getting us to believe it at the same time is, is a very solid point given the choice that they made. Yeah. My real, my bigger point over that is, if if ultimately the reveal at the end of the day is it was Agatha all along, which it is because there's a whole song and it's at the top of iTunes. True. Um, <laughs> there's, why, why not just have Agatha bring back our Pietro? Like she explained yeah. it in a very logical way of he, necromancy is hard, he was far away, there was bullet holes in him, but like, she's a witch. We don't know how magic works. So yeah. it would have been just as easy for them creatively to have the actual Pietro show up and have Wanda be like, oh my God, Pietro, and us go, oh my God, he's back. What the fuck is going on? And we all would have had a whole like, you know, Reddit thread about what that meant. Um, and yeah. the fact that they chose, the fact that they actively chose not to do that and then actively chose to bring the other Pietro from the other universe in, yeah. I still feel like, I, I think that your point is really, really valid. I think that the, it did make us believe it the same way she did. I think it also opened up a can of worms for them that if they're not going to go down that road was probably not the smartest can of worms to open. Yeah, it was a temp it was a uh, short-sighted benefit but a long-term consequence possibly. So we shall possibly. Sure. we'll see for what sure. happens with it. Yeah, absolutely. And and I I loved it. It was great to see him, but yeah, they should I mean and and maybe there was a bucks thing too. Aaron Taylor Johnson leads movies. Evan does it. Maybe they felt they couldn't afford I it. I mean, went around does he it. lately Godzilla. Uh, SD, Giddy, I'm just going to throw it out there, possibly. SD, Giddy, Michael, Emma, love your shade at John and Shannon. It's great. <laughs> well, there you go. Thank you, SD, Giddy. Uh, Derek Johnson. I says, just wanted to go visit my friend on the weekend. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me such a bad guy. <laughs> You know, I get lonely. It's like, Shannon's like, I don't live on Hayward Island. I just By go there sometimes. By the way, you guys, you guys are on Hayward Island, like roasting marshmallows. Emma and I are on our yacht, like sipping martinis, <laughs> yes. just like laughing at you over here. Like. Yeah. <laughs> while, while you guys mind control people. And don't forget that. All right, Derek, Derek Johnson says, just stop Monica's story. She has her time coming. Gotta say, this is getting me hyped for all the remaining MCU content for that sure. all of them are a part of. Yeah. Agreed, right? I think Definitely. we're all in agreement of that. Yeah. Uh, Let's see, Baltieg Kiovile. I hope I said that right. Uh, love the show. Just wanted to say hey to the red shirt guy. Yeah, that was the one he said to me. Uh, <laughs> God, it's been a long time. 
Jack Maul said, uh, hope's going into Falcon Winter Soldier. It's only two weeks away. Yeah, we get the making of next Ooh. week. And then Falcon and Winter Soldier almost immediately afterwards. Uh, are you guys hyped? Are you guys excited now after this first series from the MCU? Oh, um, yeah. I'm oh. really glad that WandaVision happened first. Mm. Um, uh, in a lot of ways, because I, I was already really excited about WandaVision uh, yeah. and the fact that it ended up incidentally being the first one because it wasn't meant to be. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier was supposed to come out before WandaVision, but just the way everything shook out. And that was actually something I wanted to address was um, the character of Darcy because in mm. the credits, they did say something about a Darcy double. So I think that it was a COVID scheduling thing when they came back. Yeah. to finish shooting some stuff. And that's why she was kind of underutilized in this episode as well, though I did really enjoy her driving the ice cream truck into Hayward and saying, see you in jail. Uh, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, but what I'm saying is that I, I think that this just gives me tremendous hope hmm. for what they're going to do with the Marvel shows. Uh, yeah. Also with um, the uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I loved the preview that we've seen of it so far. I've always been a little whatever about uh sharon carter but i'm really excited to see her in this show because i think that there were a lot of characters that we saw in wandavision who had been like okay cool they're in it and then yeah. they really got to shine yeah. in wandavision so i'm very hopeful for uh falcon and the winter soldier yeah you guys as well very much so. uh, absolutely like i haven't been i i haven't been a huge fan of the trailers they've they've released until this most recent one which sure, we talked sure, about same. you really yeah. got to see the chemistry between those two that works so well in civil mm -hmm. war um we're all expecting more of sort of the winter soldier vibe and i hope we get that but i hope they're able to throw some curveballs in there as well certainly uh, yeah i'm a little that's the only the only concern i have and it's it's a small concern i'm super excited about it is that I feel like their original strategy was to give us our first show out of the gate was going to be more of a straight down the line Marvel action yeah. superhero movie. And then they were going to get a little weirder. And I think we've all really enjoyed the weird a yeah. lot. And I think with Loki, we're going to get plenty more weird. And so I feel like we're almost going to like, we had such a weird thing with WandaVision and we have a weird thing down the line with Loki. And we're kind of going to about to get... Yeah hopefully a really good straight yeah. down the line marvel action movie which is gonna be great i'm sure. just it'll be interesting to see how people respond after the cult the total mind fuck that was wandavision yeah right. well, i think it'll be yep. a nice change of pace though taking a breath between the two yeah. weird things possibly. yeah yeah yeah. because be i'm awesome. definitely excited about loki which looks weird <laughs> yeah hell yeah uh, uh <laughs> jesse says hayward ended up being arrested for lying and illegal stuff he did with vision but not a villain just went about it in an asshole way plus he didn't shoot at kids he shot at projections, which only exist inside the hex, which were an extension of Wanda. Well, I love Jesse on uh, Hayward Island. He's quite <laughs> hard. I respect you, Jesse. You keep fighting, my brother. Uh, Justin Toner says, well, hey, you want, well, okay, well, you want, well, you want well, to address well, it? Just really quickly, just to be clear about Wanda's powers, so we're all on the same page. Yeah. Vision, her kids, everybody are not just like projections. It's not mm -hmm. like a holodeck yeah. situation. It's not like they actually are real and do exist. That's what her chaos magic can does. can literally, yeah, change reality. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, but not outside of the energy field, as we saw. So, okay. Well, well not okay. In not this out. Moment. Not in this. Not moment. outside of Hayward Island. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm saying Jesse's got a point here. Justin I'll, I'll make that reservation for three. <laughs> um, <laughs> dot cafe later uh justin told us hey everyone thanks for the wonderful reviews of the show i was very satisfied with the finale i loved wanda's journey uh to moving on from her grief and pain and start on the path to getting better her saying goodbye to vision and the twins made me cry yeah uh we agree yeah. with you justin Same. that's for sure tears uh, see yeah proctor dane whitman says absolutely love this series and your phenomenal reviews gang thank you proctor Monica is one of my faves and always on my fan Avenger rosters and so happy and proud that Marvel has done her justice and then some. Seeing her glow, her photon gold was an awesome treat. Hashtag giddy. Yeah. Yeah. It was I, honestly, Monica Rambeau was not someone that I was super familiar with in the comics and she has in just these nine weeks risen up to like... As far as I'm concerned, she could become the central character of the entire MCU, and I'd be super happy about it. Yeah, yeah. loved Monica. Lo yeah, uh, again, just 
the way that they made you care about that character in such a short time. And yeah. I, I think that the fact that all of us are saying, oh man, we feel like Monica was underutilized. Yeah. It, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that some of us are, you know, varying levels of uh, familiar with her from the comics. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Tayana Paris like brought so much like to this role and yeah. and you know they they handled her introduction so beautifully that it really makes me excited for everything that we're going to see her in in the future. Agreed, agreed. Uh, Arliss one twenty three says really loving the breakdowns and I could watch you guys on your commentary all day. Uh, I'm looking <laughs> forward to future reactions. Keep them coming. Thank hmm. you, Arliss. Very kind. Of hmm. you. Um, Derek Johnson says, "Hey, geek buddies, we are gonna need the schedule for the remaining MCU movies and TV reviews so we can promote and blast this show to Aww. everyone we know." <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Derek. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you'll know when we know. That's what I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> that's why you got to follow all of us. The, the little Lola says, "Like the finale, love the show overall. Do you think the boner moment will overshadow the season finale?" And will Disney address it? Do you think fans creating more theories around Boner is people taking theories too far? No, I no. mean, I, I think in the grand scheme of the finale, that was a, that was a little blip. Um, but it's yeah. it's certain there's too much good stuff happened to get caught up and to get caught up in that. I agree. Yeah, I agree. You guys and, I, and look, as as a as a show that is super guilty of overanalyzing every moment of <laughs> like that is that's literally yeah. what you guys have been watching us do for nine weeks it's what we said it's what we said on our geek buddies show this week it's what we said last week which is look the issue of guessing and conjecturing and theorizing like we should all do that it's super fun it's fun it's, yeah. It, yeah. Is, it is it is fun to like dig through comics and find the references and guess and look at something in the background and wonder if everything from the tiger on the kitchen table to the hula dancer on the truck to every moment like what could it mean like it's fun. It only becomes a problem when you get so upset that that didn't mean something. Like, look, yes. Yes. like I said, like I said last week, like we have all been Mephistoed and we have all been Mephistoed hard. Yep. And like, that's great because the emotional payoff that we got this week was good. So yeah. the theorizing is great. And I think that Disney and Marvel and everybody loves that we care about it that much that we do oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we just recognize at the end of the day that like, there's a really talented creative team that's telling a really good story. Yes. And like, they're doing a good job. The yep. authors don't, owe you anything but a good story and right. that is what we got and it was very true to a lot of you know what we understand of Wanda as a character within the MCU and also brought in a lot of what we love about her from the comic books is this mm -hmm. idea of this incredibly powerful woman who is so so powerful that she's almost forced to walk the line between a hero and a villain because her powers are so extreme that the possibility of them getting out of control or out of her own control is very possible. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like, and ultimately, like the show was called WandaVision. They told an incredibly emotionally satisfying story about Wanda and Vision while still giving us a lot of things to speculate about that were super fun. And so long as you don't expect every single one of your speculations to come true, yeah. you're allowed to feel disappointed that what you're speculating about is not the reality. But if you try to say that the show is terrible because everything that you thought your tinfoil hat theories didn't come to pass, then that no. that is a problem but as long as yeah. you're able to to separate your speculation from the actual emotionally satisfying story that was incredibly yeah. well told and incredibly well acted by everybody involved then it's fun yeah yeah, yeah i when i think when when our shows or our films cease to be about the character that gets us there I, I, and i'm not a fan of the schumacher movies and i feel like that's what happened i mean the movies became not about batman they became about stunt casting these colorful villains yeah, yeah. and ultimately i mean I, that's not the only reason i think they suffered but th that was certainly <laughs> certainly a part of it yeah all right, that's good, great stuff. Uh, Proctor Dane Whitman says, Olsen has been one of the greatest additions to the MCU cast by far. Love her SW Scarlet Witch costume. Great combo of Mike Diotto, Diodato and George Perez. Hearing her son's voices could be many things, especially if someone's using the voices to lure her. I am ready for more. 
Yeah. Shout out to Mike Diodato and George Perez. Good reference there for yeah. sure. Mike it's you- Mephisto. It's <laughs> Mephisto. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no more tricking her, too. Give her, <laughs> let, let her handle shit for a bit. Uh, yeah. All right. Leonard Kim says, do you think we see white vision, hashtag vision, in Doctor Strange vision! Multiverse of Madness, Captain Marvel 2, or any other future MCU projects? Oh, undoubtedly, Leonard. Undoubtedly. Oh, uh, I would be astounded if he's not in it. Right? I, 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 don't, just... think, I don't think Paul Bettany's interview gaffe was bad enough that they're not going <laughs> to ask him back. <laughs> Good point. I just hope, but I just hope that the next time we see him, it's like somewhere random. Like he's just like at a cafe somewhere, sipping coffee, being yes. like, who, ha- who am I really? He's like, just, just like completely. Yes. He's just contemplating his own existence. And like, <laughs> yeah. have I ceased to be vision? Cause I have none of visions lived experience <laughs> yeah very deep stuff he's got he's got a journey to go on for sure uh yeah. gavin min says uh, i love the journey this season took us on and i can't wait to see how this affects the mcu going forward thank you for bringing in emma oh definitely thank you emma for coming in thank you and, for having me <laughs> and, and for these nine weeks of great discussions you really made me think differently and often truly touched me aloha all Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Aww. That's very kind of you. Uh, Chris underscore Sanchez says, you four are amazing. One division was awesome. And I hope the Geek Buddies community has an amazing weekend. Aw. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, Jesse C said, uh, the writing for Monica was a bit terrible. Two times she tried to defend Wanda for what she's doing. The first was a few episodes ago when Hayward says she's got them prisoned. Monica says, yeah, but she could have imprisoned more, but she didn't. What? It makes no sense. All right, Jesse. It didn't work for you. That's your opinion. I yeah. I respect that it didn't work for you. Um, mm-hmm. I interpreted it differently, but again, your reading of it mm-hmm. is just as valid as mine is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Good, Mike. No, I was going to say when you have a character like Wanda who does walk that line between hero yeah. and villain, and you have writers who are trying to like also walk that line, like it's not always going to sit right to everybody. So I do think like it's completely good. Like I completely get where you're coming from, uh, and I think that like there's that's going to be a thing that the MCU is going to continue to deal with is how the characters respond to Wanda depending on how they feel about her and how they emotionally react to her is going to be very different to everybody else. And I think that the is Wanda correct or not and is everybody around her correct or not is probably a debate that will continue to go on. Oh, yeah. I think it'll rage for quite some time. And that's a good thing. You want people to talk about your show. That's not a negative. Um, DSG Goodbar says, I feel lucky to have watched WandaVision because many of us needed this show to help us through our grief. Thank you all for sharing this journey with us. Yeah, I mean... I had a bit of a, um, I don't know, I had a bit of a tirade on the SCN Live earlier this week because I saw some people in our critics community being really snarky and shitty about people who loved that line and were gushing about that line online. Oh, God. Uh, and I, I felt the need to go off on those people, go, let people fucking have something yes. that they need to get through this time because fuck you for trying to take it away from them. And, I, and all, that's I, what I felt there. Yeah. I saw a little of what you were talking about, yeah, Roka, yeah. and it was and it was a lot of people, and, and I saw, fortunately, a lot of people like you that were very much coming to people's defense saying, like, yeah. I get it. This is not an entirely original line. This has been in literature in the past. It, right. it, it you know, it references some th- some things that have been said before. But it's like, don't look down on people yeah. because they're enjoying this really philosophical moment that's been put into this piece of popular fiction. There is nothing wrong with that. And this was absolutely the greatest time that this show could have possibly yep. been released because we are all dealing with the collective grief and trauma of losing a year of yeah. our lives. Yep, yeah, yeah, great points, great points. Yeah, so <laughs> let people have shit, man. Because yeah. you're all, sometimes you're also the same people who are gushing about something else and get mad hey. if people make fun of you for gushing. Yeah, about it. So exactly. Say it a lot, nice. don't, don't yuck somebody else's yum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't put your- You are not in, somehow like, morally superior because you have yeah. read more than someone that yeah. is enjoying this literary reference in WandaVision. Exactly. Also, Vision read the same books you did and exactly. that's where he got the line from. So don't get twisted. <laughs> don't, don't overtly jack your brain off on Twitter. All right, Jesse C said second, uh, he's got his going. Just second, was this episode by telling Wanda, don't worry if the townspeople don't like you. They don't know what you had to sacrifice. What? They were prisoners being mentally tortured. Why would they forgive Wanda? Not good writing. 
No, actually, it is good writing, Jesse, in that it causes conflict. It ca yeah. They're laying the groundwork here for a mistrust of Scarlet Witch, a mistrust of heroes. So that is going to bear fruit down the road. So, yes, I agree with you. I, I thought they copped out a little bit, Jesse. We spoke about that on the show. But overall, this may bear some fruit down the road as we see more humans turn on heroes or a yeah. question heroes and certainly the sokovia accords were a part of that there's yeah. going to be more of that as we enter a new phase here in the mcu for sure um all right uh cooley cooley hi love cooley hi great to see you in here cooley tony wasn't wrong when he told cap in civil war that wanda was a weapon of mass destruction she is too powerful and there have to be checks and balances i don't know that's kind of a i don't know maybe we'll see down yeah. the road what that means to <laughs> But you know, well, you're talking, I think the good. Not a, but go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I mean, look, look. I I'm on Team Cap for Civil War, but I think what makes Civil War interesting as a concept, and I think what makes Hayward Island and Wanda herself and everything an interesting discussion is that we don't have to deal with this in real life. But if we did have to deal with this in real life, there would be some serious questions. And oh, yeah. Tony's Tony's uh, stance in Civil War is not entirely wrong, nor is Caps. That's why Civil War is such a great story. Yes. Right, right. Uh, yeah, agreed. And, uh, you know, it's dangerous uh, to walk that line with it, and we'll see how they play it out for sure. Because the last thing you want is this overt thing where you're controlling a powerful woman. That's the last thing you fucking want nowadays for sure. Um, all right, Max underscore Dylan said, could Ralph be a fake identity that Agatha gave Peter Maximoff after bringing him into the MCU. Uh, remember, Monica's Kevlar turned into sitcom clothes, but the material remained Kevlar. By those equivalency rules, Fietro is a speedster. He never says his name. Does this work? Um, Does this make sense to anybody? I mean, I think we, we kind of talked about that, that he was very entertained by his own last name, as if he not heard it a whole lot. So, I mean, yeah, sure. It, it's certainly possible. I mean, I... I, I I don't necessarily see the the fertile storytelling ground that would be there, yeah. um, but it's certainly possible. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, two F A F O U. Two F F O U. I hope. Uh, hey gang, thanks for the great reviews week to week. They've really brightened up my week in between episodes. Since we're getting Billy and Tommy along with the Young Avengers, do we think Marvel will keep their LGBTQ identities, Mikey? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, if you're reading Marvel Comics currently and you read like the big Empire crossover uh, over the past year where Billy's like future boyfriend, uh, who is the emperor of the Kree Squirrel Alliance, like Marvel is not shying away from LGBTQ representation in the comics. Mm. And I certainly don't think they're going to be shying away from it. Like when you look at it, and this was a big part of like Kevin Feige's presentation of Phase Four at Comic Con a couple of years ago. You looked at who they were casting on screen. You looked at the teams that they were bringing in to direct these movies behind the scenes. Like uh, uh, inclus inclusivity, diversity is clearly a big part of the MCU plan. And I don't think that, given all indications of what Marvel is doing, that's going to slow down anytime soon. So I am. 100% here for Billy to get older and be the boyfriend and sorcerer supreme for the emperor of the Kree Scroll Alliance. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, all right, Leonard Kim says, I'm not too familiar with Monica Rambo's backstory and powers, but I am I crazy to think that she's one of the more powerful characters we will have in the MCU? Yes. You're not crazy yeah. to think not that crazy. at all. <laughs> not crazy she at all. She will be, yeah. Especially the pedigree she comes from, her mom and uh, uh, Captain Marvel uh, being part of her uh, up upbringing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cameron Renfro says, what if Wanda wants her children to exist so bad that she learns about Dormammu from the Darkhold, makes a bargain with him for the kids to exist for passage to the Earth? I, I, I would be surprised if they go put her through this nine-episode journey of grief and then have her once again exchange her kids for a journey to bring evil onto the earth. That doesn't make sense yeah, to me. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, as much as I kind of like that concept, to be honest, I yeah. don't think that it necessarily works post WandaVision because I feel like she's <laughs> okay. gone on this journey again towards like trying to really uh, 
embrace the idea of being the hero. So now I think that there is definitely a struggle with her of trying to figure out how can I still be the hero, but also get what I want. Yeah. Um. So I don't think that she would go that far. I do think that she will be confronted with other uh, sort of moral dilemmas as mm -hmm. she continues to go down her journey here. But I yeah. think that it's, it'll be more of a taking a toll on herself as opposed to taking a toll on humanity. Yeah, yes. agreed. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I don't think she's gonna strike a, strike a deal with a higher power. I think she is the higher power now. Yeah, yeah. she is the higher power. And how do I use yeah. my higher power to get what I want? We have a captain. also. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Also, Dor Dormammu, Mephisto, I don't care who it is, I would not fuck with Wanda. Yeah, no. like don't, <laughs> don't come for her. She'll choke you out. Um, we have a we have a civil war situation happening here where uh, one person wants to be put above a thousand people. Paul Beswick <laughs> saying we have a vodka soda waiting. This has gotten out of hand. Paul, there's a thousand people watching us. Wait your damn ass turn. We're almost done. All right, next thing here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Delia Cunningham says Hayward Island is flooded. My dad passed away in January. I love that. Oh, yeah. But he says uh, my, no, no. Wait. He says Hayward Island is flooded. That's fair. Let's laugh at that. Fair, fair, but fair. Then Adelia says, my dad passed away in January, a week before WandaVision began. So I navigated Ugh. my grief with Wanda. What's best? What's the best thing from the show? Oh, my for God. You? That's a great question. Um, it, That's is, really a it is for me. It is for me, Wanda, uh, creating this world um, mm. that she wanted to escape into and having the power to do that because I just really, really related to that. My Self is somebody that just, I think from all of the, um, everything that's been going on, and I was so in denial of the fact that I had lost anything at all last year because I had a lot of really good things happen for me last yeah. year. I did. Um, you know, I, I got a, a new job um, that is really as close to a dream job as I could possibly hope for. Uh, I was able to move into an amazing new apartment um, and be neighbors with your friend and mine, uh, John Roca, Mark Ellis, again, oh, who is just great. one of the greatest humans alive. Yes. Um, so, and he was a really good friend to me through everything I was going through last year, um, which was all very positive um, right. as far as my own journey went. But, you know, I, uh, I was finally uh, actually, you know, diagnosed with some clinical depression that I was going through. Oh, um, and, and so just like this, like story of Wanda and this woman and this grief and, and like dealing with her loss and being able to craft something that was so beautiful, but so dark at the same time, uh, just really, really loved that story um, and really felt for the first time, like through Wanda in this story, I was really seeing myself represented within the MCU because she was this incredibly, because she is this incredibly like complex woman. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I uh, I really, really loved this show, particularly the character of Wanda and like finally getting to have this character who I love because she does represent something that's not quite good and not quite evil. God damn, man. Uh, well, <laughs> can I say for all of us at the Geek Buddies, we appreciate you even more for yeah. <laughs> yeah. with us, considering what you go. Thank you so yeah, much. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very proud of you. Uh, very beautiful. Uh, Hasco420 says, hello, Geek Buddies. Thank you all for this past nine weeks of deep uh -huh. dives into these WandaVision episodes. I love the finale, even with some of the issues noted, questions answered, not answered, and the new ones arose. But overall, massive kudos to Feige and company, this entire cast. It stinks. We got to wait for September to see how many Emmys <laughs> this thing gets nominated for. I know many months to go, but what do you think they could they could get nominated for if nominations were this week? Lead and supporting actors, writing series. Good questions. I re I really hope I really hope it does break that sort of superhero genre issue that we get a lot mm -hmm. of times because I think that yeah. if, if any if any superhero genre show deserved it this one does for the yeah. for the um, the passion the amount of work the emotion the acting the performances like every single level like i know that we're getting this behind the scenes look of wandavision next week but even in the trailer that disney plus posted you just see like the from a costume design design so the set design every aspect of yeah. this like so much was put into it they really do deserve it
Yeah, uh, yeah. I would say episode four for writing, which was mm. Monica's backstory. Yeah, and episode seven for direction, because it yeah. ended with Agatha all along. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say that uh, Elizabeth Olsen mm. and Paul Bettany stand to be nominated for best um, leading actor and actress. I think that. Uh, Catherine Hahn would probably fall in the category of best supporting actress as well as Tiana yeah. Paris. Um, I, yeah, it just, I agree that I just really want to see it break the, the curse of superhero shows not yeah. being taken, um, seriously. Uh, I definitely think that there is a, uh, it, it stands to potentially get some, uh, like, cinematography certainly uh, achievement in effects and and all yeah. the things that superhero shows normally get nominated for but i i do think that um now we're gonna get an opportunity for it to be nominated for sort of the more uh, quote-unquote prestigious awards if you will <laughs> break break the curse or break the hex hey. uh, oh, okay uh, okay <laughs> There it is. Uh, all right, Mir we've got two more to go here before you get your vodka soda, Mikey. Miro Miriam <laughs> says, uh, can we also acknowledge phenomenal acting? Well, I think we just I did. I think we just did. <laughs> yeah, certainly, all of us agreeing with Emma's points of views on that for sure. Uh, and then Frankie Gouge, our last one, says, the only thing that peeved me off about the Ralph Boner thing is, why not go full hard on with this name being... <laughs> And make him Richard Boner. Uh, I think we, that's a different network and a different <laughs> channel, my man. So, uh, well, I, well, I wait. Expect, to his <laughs> wait. To his point. To his point. Disney Plus or not Disney Plus? Once you go yeah. Boner, once you've gone Boner, <laughs> like, yeah, like, might as well go all the way in. <laughs> hey, well, uh, we got one last one actually that came in if i can find it here from film djs he said came for john roca stayed for mike vogel and somewhere along the line found out shannon mcclung was super cool and emma well she's always been awesome thanks so much for these reviews Aww. that's a great way to end on it all right we still have over 900 you're watching so thank wow. you so much for sticking around incredible for, as we read these stream labs and super chats thanks to everyone who has joined us on this journey kind of sad that we're closing the book on this but we, will, <laughs> we will totally be back for falcon and winter soldier in some form so thank you all so much uh and definitely one more time, thank you so much to Emma Fife for coming <laughs> with us on this trip. You thank have you. made such a difference in our reviews and certainly become uh, just something that we, we've really enjoyed spending time with and getting to hear your points of views on. I uh, have really enjoyed doing this. Uh, I was so excited for this show, and it was even better uh, than I think I imagined. So thank you for having me. This has been lovely. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, someone's saying we have Streamlabs to read, but I don't see any oh. new ones there, Tushka. So maybe send it again as we're saying goodbye yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, certainly thank you to everyone who has joined us here today. Thank you for all your Streamlabs and Super Chats. Thanks. I didn't know if anyone was going to watch. The fact that we got over a thousand <laughs> people watching us live through the entire review was pretty incredible for sure. Um, and as we said, we will absolutely be back uh, in some form for Falcon and Winter Soldier in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, you can watch our regular shows, which just dropped our last episode a couple of days ago. So go and watch that. We talked about our WandaVision finale. See if we were wrong or right about our predictions and a couple of other things. Um, all right. Uh, let's get on out of here. We're at the three-hour mark. Shannon, what do we have to tell them, man? Yeah, if you'd like to follow us on social media, on Twitter, it's at Geek underscore Buddies, on Instagram, at The underscore Geek underscore Buddies. If you'd like to follow me on social media, on Twitter, it's at Shannon underscore McClung, on Instagram, at Shannon the Geek Buddy. If you would like to follow Mr. Vogel, it is at MK2. And if you would like to follow Mr. Roca, it is at the Roca says. Mikey? Listen, if y'all are still here, fucking kudos to you. Uh, <laughs> you guys, you guys are the ones we like. You guys are the ones that are going to keep us here. Smash the like button. Leave comments below. Subscribe to Johnny's Outlaw page. Uh, leave us some comments. Uh, if you're listening to us on Anchor or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, rate us there. Leave us some comments. Post us on Twitter, retweet us on Twitter, tell everybody to check this out. Uh, you guys are awesome. This has been a blast. 
Talking with these guys about WandaVision has made the show even more fun for me. I hope that we've made it more fun for you. And let's keep this going through all of the great Marvel shows, all the great Star Wars shows. And let's just hang out here every weekend for the next like five, six, seven years. <laughs> let's do it. And Emma Fife, where can they find everything you got going yeah. on? And follow you on social media, please. Um, so I'm at Emma Fife on Twitter, recently verified on Twitter. So hey! I'm just very, uh, very honored that um, apparently, awesome. you know, people care enough to make sure they're following the real me. So yeah, I'm at Emma Fife on Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> Twitch, uh, still uh, doing my Thursday streams on my Twitch channel uh, at 6 p.m. Pacific time on um, Thursdays. It's getting wild in Code Realize. I am finally <laughs> locked into a romance route. We're dating Abraham Von Helsing um, of Dracula fame. Um, and suddenly we're in a weird saw in steampunk. And I don't know if I like it, but we're doing it. Uh, okay. And then, of course, be sure to check out the download uh, on uh, Venn.tv. That is a show that I host Monday through Friday. It airs at 10 a.m. Pacific time. The VODs also live on Venn.tv. Um, and... Uh, the Venn Download YouTube channel as well, where I have a new series called Thirsty Thursday. I, it sounds like we need to do an episode about Vision. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this episode, he is Vision, in that, oh, Vision yeah. in that turtleneck, total daddy status. Mm. Um, we just did an episode about Fire Emblem Three Houses. Next week's episode is going to be ranking um, the Pokemon professors and determining which one is daddy AF. So, you know, <laughs> be sure to check that out. I would really appreciate you all um, going and giving that a like leave a comment let me know that you came from the geek buddies reviews um you're all great thank you so much <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome tushka again tushka if you sent in anything i don't have it maybe you sent it to the wrong address brother but i do not have <laughs> you stream lab i apologize um uh so brother i love you but uh i, I don't see it my man so <laughs> hopefully at some point maybe you figure out if you send it to the wrong address uh, seems like a few Streamlabs were missed, but hey, it's been oh. three hours. I don't know what to do. I mean, I've refreshed it. I'm here on the Streamlabs. I think I read them all. I hope you all stayed for all of them. And please let me know if I missed any, but I'm pretty sure I went through all of them one by one and got to them uh, piece by piece. And I'm looking over right now. Absolutely read every single one I'm looking at right now. So if you didn't get through, I don't know what happened, but I don't see it. So maybe the money didn't go through either. So you get to keep your money. Thank you for watching. That's what matters. <laughs> so uh, one more time. Thank you all so, so much. You guys have been incredible. Appreciate it. Please remember, as Mikey said, to share it. Also, please subscribe to the channel. The numbers have gone up for, for the uh, over these reviews. So I can't thank you all enough for coming aboard. Encourage more people to come aboard as well. Try, Aisha Kenya believes that I'm going to break 20,000 by July. Help her make that vision come true, so to speak. Uh, we shall see. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Much love to all of you. Please be well. Practice your social distancing. Wear your mask. And, all, and remember the messages about love in this series, about love and persevering through grief. We've all been through a lot of shit over the last year. Take these lessons and these moments and remember them and let them carry you some of the tough moments through some of the tough moments as well. All right, we're out of here. We'll talk to you next time on The... Geek Buddies! <gasps> 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 <gasps>